Okay, so we go to the comprehensive items ng income taxes. Uh, bago natin i-discuss yung uh, mga items, i-recall lang natin yung mga basic concepts, okay? Para pag nagsusolve tayo later on, dire-diretso, at least maintindihan natin kung ano yung, or ma-recall natin kung ano yung mga uh, basic na uh, concepts natin doon sa pagsusolve ng income taxes relating to uh, IS-20. Okay. So first, uh, in problem solving, first thing that we are going to do is we look for the pre-tax income. Okay. Pre-tax income. Okay. So, yung pre-tax income natin, hindi natin sure kung yung pre-tax income na yan ay um, may mga kasamang uh, permanent differences or may mga kasamang mga items that are um, not really subject to income tax. So, ang gagawin natin dyan, kapag meron tayong pre-tax income, ang gagawin natin is kunin muna natin yung add back. Add back natin yung mga non-deductible permanent difference. PD na lang para shortcut. Hindi, sige. Kasha naman eh. So, ilagay na lang natin. Permanent difference. Ayan. Add back natin yan. Tapos, deduct naman natin mga non-taxable Permanent difference. Yan. Okay. So, pag nakuha mo na yan, makukuha mo na yung pre-tax income or wait, accounting income pala lagyan natin ng accounting dito para at least alam natin na accounting income yan. Okay. So, we have pre-tax accounting income that can have your permanent differences. So, ang gagawin natin, i-add back natin yung mga non-deductible permanent difference. Tapos, i-deduct natin yung mga non-taxable permanent difference. So, usually, kapag sinabi natin non-deductible permanent difference, yan yung mga expenses na pinawas natin pero hindi pala dapat ibawas. Tapos, yung mga non-taxable permanent difference, yan naman yung mga income na tinagdag natin pero hindi naman pala dapat i-dagdag. Okay? So, after mong gawin yun, makukuha mo yung pre-tax accounting income. Okay, pre-tax accounting income na subject subject <laughs> subject to income tax. Okay? So, makukuha mo na yun. So, usually, ang ginagawa dito Okay. Lagyan natin ng ano dito, uh, ng note dito. If tax rates are the same. Are the same. Um, multiply by tax rate to get um, total income tax. So, yan. Pwedeng, pwede mong gawin na yan. Okay? Ang gawin mo is, pag nakuha mo na itong pre-tax accounting income, tapos pinapakompute sa'yo how much is the total income tax. Pwedeng diretsyo mo nang i-compute. Ganyan siya. Okay? Pero take note, it is only applicable if the tax rates are the same. Ibig sabihin, parehas yung tax rate ng current income tax, parehas yung tax rate ng mga deferred taxes. Okay? Hindi siya pwedeng mangyari kung or hindi mo pwedeng gawin ito na diretso ang computation if magkakaiba yung tax rate. Okay? Kaya meron tayong nilagay na asterisk dito para hindi ka uh, para hindi ka magkamali ng computation. Okay? Mamaya ilpakita natin yung alternative. Okay? So after nyan, pag nakuha mo na yung pre-tax accounting income, hanapin mo na yung mga taxable temporary difference. Okay. Anong gagawin sa taxable temporary difference? Diba? Ang concept ng taxable temporary difference sa future pa. Okay. Sa future pa itatax. Okay. Kaya ang gagawin mo dito ay i-deduct. 
Okay, deduct your taxable temporary difference. Okay, kasi ang mangyari dyan is a future pa siya matataksan. Take note, pabaliktad tayo ha, nang galing tayo ng accounting income, kaya hindi na deduct natin siya. Okay, kapag galing ka accounting income. Okay, so i-deduct mo yan. Tapos, diretsyo na rin to, multiply. Ito, hiwalang asterisk ka kasi ganun naman talaga ang computation nito. Multiply by effective tax rate. Tax rate upon realization para makuha mo to get your DTL, Deferred Tax Liability. Okay? So, wala namang issue dyan. Ang gaya naman kasi talaga yung gagawin natin dyan. Okay? So, tax rate lang tapos compute. Tapos, kunin mo naman yung mga deductible temporary difference. Okay? So, pagkukunin mo naman yung deductible temporary difference, syempre, na-discuss naman natin noong last time yan, ano yung mga components niya. Tapos, kunin mo lahat yun, i-add back mo naman. Bakit i-add back? Kasi nang galing nga tayo sa nang galing nga tayo ng accounting income. Okay? So, parang ang gagawin, tinedact na niya, pero hindi pa dapat itedact kasi deductible pa nga lang in the future. So, yun siya. Oops. Okay? Pagkatapos, kunin mo dito, Multiply mo rin ng tax rate. Multiply by effective tax rate upon realization to get DTA naman, deferred tax asset. Okay, so yun yung item natin dyan. Okay, so pag nakuha mo na yun, so may pre-tax accounting income ka na dyan, subject to tax, ay wait, lagyan nga natin ang linya. Para lang alam natin na magsosolve tayo dyan. Yan, kanya na lang. Okay? Kukuha mo na dito yung taxable income. Okay? The taxable income will now be the amount of income that is going to be recorded for tax purposes. Gawin mo dito, multiply by current tax rate. to get the current tax expense. Yan. Ganyan naman yung item natin dyan. So, ito, ito na yung uh, ating item dyan. Okay. Now, this is the computation that you're going to do if nanggaling ka sa pre-tax accounting income. Okay? Uh, mas madali siyang mas madali siyang maintindihan kapag nag-start ka ng taxable income. Actually, parang babalik ta rin mo lang yan. Okay, kasi sa ganitong presentation, you are showing that, that uh, you are prioritizing the computation of the total income tax. Pero, mas makikita mo yung logical computation kapag mag-start ka sa taxable income. So, present lang natin sandali. Di ba? The taxable income is equal to the income that is going to be taxed by the taxing authorities during the year, di ba? Or during the current year. So, automatic, pag kinuha mo yung taxable income na yan, tapos, multiply natin ng tax rate. Okay? Anong tax rate ulit yan? Siyempre, current tax rate. Okay? Parang balik, parang kabalik na lang ng computation, ha? pero pinapakita lang natin. This is equal to the current tax expense. Okay? So, ganun yung mangyari. Current tax expense natin yan. Okay? Okay. Tapos, hanapin mo yung TTD, Taxable Temporary Difference. Okay? So, yung Taxable Temporary Difference, ito yung nakita natin sa accounting income na sinama na niya pero hindi pa pala sinama for tax purposes or hindi pa dapat isa for tax purposes. Ang ginagawa mo dito, add to kapag nag-start ka sa Taxable Income. Siyempre, kasi kabaliktaran nga, di ba? Deduct siya kapag deduct siya kapag galing ka sa accounting income tapos add siya kapag galing ka naman ng taxable income kasi ang goal mo nga, mahanap mo yung total tax expense. Okay. Yan. Pagkatapos, multiply lang natin ng tax rate. Tax rate 
effective or effective tax rate. Tax rate upon realization. Wait, i ano lang natin ah. Pakiyan lang natin. Yan. Lalabas dyan, deferred tax asset. Okay, sorry. Deferred tax liability. Okay. Tapos, deduct tayo dito. Bakit mo ito deduct Okay. Okay, deduct natin yung deductible temporary difference. Okay. I-explain ulit natin. Bakit mo ngayon dinededuct from taxable income yung deductible temporary difference? Kasi nga, hinahanap natin si accounting income na subject sa income tax, di ba? So, sa point of view ng taxable income, hindi pa siya dinedact. Pero sa point of view ni accounting, ididedact na daw dapat. Kaya, ididedact mo na siya ngayon. Okay? So, ang gagawin mo dito, this is going to be deducted. Tapos, i-multiply natin sa effective tax rate upon realization Tapos alabas dito si deferred tax asset. Okay. By the way, para makuha natin to mamaya, lagyan natin siya ng additional na discussion. Okay. Anyway, move on tayo. So, from there, makukuha mo na si pre-tax uh, accounting income subject to income tax. Okay. So, yan ay tapos ang gagawin mo, kahit wag mo nang i-multiply ng tax rate. Kasi ang gagawin mo na lang dyan, kunin mo yung current tax expense, dagdag mo yung deferred tax liability, tapos ibawas mo yung deferred tax asset, lalabas na dito yung total tax expense. or total income tax expense natin. Okay, so yung nakakalagay na asterisk dyan, ito, this is going to be presented as deferred tax expense in the, in PNL. PNL or OCI. Sige, para mas mano, comprehensive income na lang. Okay, kasi syempre hindi mo naman sure kung saan mo talaga ipepresent. Kasi depende nga kung saan, kung ano yung source ng ating deferred tax, ng deferred taxes. Kung yung source ng deferred tax ay uh, PNL, edi eh, PNL mo rin ipepresent. Ganun lang naman yan. Okay? Tapos, itong nakadalawang asterisk dyan, presented as deferred tax benefit or netted against deferred tax expense in comprehensive income. Okay. So, the preferred presentation is to recognize it as a deferred tax benefit. Okay, yun yung preferred natin. I-recognize mo siya as deferred tax benefit. Sorry, mali yung spelling. Okay. Kumbaga, para ma-recognize siya na separate item. Okay. Pero, pwede rin ang gawin mo, minsanan mo na lang na ilagay deferred tax expense tapos ipipresent mo ulit sa present mo ulit sa note presentation natin doon sa notes to FS kung paano na-arrive yung, yung net na deferred tax expense. Pero, uh, either way naman, whether gagawin mo siyang dalawang separate items, iba si deferred tax expense, iba si deferred tax benefit, at the end of the day, sa note presentation, meron pa rin naman yan. Okay? So, bahala ka na kung ano ang mas preferred mo. Okay? Pero meron kasi mga question, itatanong sa'yo, how much is the deferred tax expense? Okay? Usually, ang gusto nilang makuha doon is the net amount. Okay? Yan siya. Okay. By the way, may next concern pa tayo dito. Our next concern is reversals. 
Okay. Reversals of deferred taxes. Okay. So, number one tayo. Upon the reversal of deferred tax liability. Deferred tax expense or deferred tax benefit will be debited. Okay. So, parang ang labas dyan, di ba kasi ang deferred tax liability is, ano, di ba, is credit. Okay. Ay, sorry. Bakit debited? Credited, sorry. Okay. So, basically, ang journal entry mo doon, debit mo yung deferred tax liability. Tapos, credit ka ngayon dito ng deferred tax expense or deferred tax benefit. Yan. So, ganun din naman yun, di ba? Kasi kapag pinawasan mo yung kapag tag credit ka ng deferred tax expense, parang binabawasan mo yung ex tax expense for this period, di ba? Parang ganun siya. Kapag naman in-credit mo yung deferred tax benefit, parang pinabawasan mo yung benefit. So, effectively, mababawasan din naman ma... Sorry ito. Ma... Babawasan yung ating expense for this period. Okay? Parang ganun siya. Okay. Tapos naman, number two, and the reversal of deferred tax asset okay deferred tax expense or deferred tax benefit will be debited naman okay so entry recognize ka dito ng deferred tax expense or deferred tax benefit. Okay. Tapos, wait, kulang yung space ko dun sa journal entry. Parang hindi nakakalito. Ganyan na lang. Discredit ka ng DTA. Yan. So, generally, Uh, madadagdagan yung ating deferred tax asset. Okay? Or kaya mas maganda kung, kung ang gina, kaya nga ang preferred din nila is isang account na lang gamitin mo. Deferred tax expense na lang ang gamitin mo. Ganon din lang naman siya. Okay? So yan yung item natin dyan. Mas sa take note, magkabaliktad ang effect niya. Diba? So kapag yung deferred tax expense ay na-debit, ibig sabihin madadagdagan yung deferred tax expense. Okay? Pag nadagdagan yung deferred tax benefit, baliktad ang effect niya, minus siya. Okay? So, yun lang naman. Para hindi lang, kaya usually, para hindi nakakalito, deferred tax expense na lang gamitin mo item. Okay? So, as a result, parang ganito. Kung doon sa deferred tax liability natin, magre-reverse siya. So, magkikredit ka ng deferred tax expense, ibig sabihin, babawasan natin yung mababawasan yung ating total income tax during the period. Tapos, dito naman, kapag dinebit mo yung deferred tax expense, madadagdagan. Okay? Yung, if, madadagdagan yung total tax expense natin during the period. Okay? So, yan siya. Okay, so yan yung mga uh, basic na considerations natin para hindi tayo malito later on dun sa pagkocompute natin ng ating Uh, income, income taxes. Okay? So, from there, mag-start na tayong mag-solve ng mga problems. So, dito tayo nag-stop nung last time. So, solve na natin to. Okay. So, number 11 tayo. So, in 20x8, the company reported in accounting income gross profit on installment sale of 1 million but not in taxable income. So, si accounting nag-recognize na si taxable income hindi pa. This temporary difference is expected to be reportable in taxable income equally in 20x9 and 2x10. 
assume the income tax rate is 35%, so parehas lang daw all throughout. Um, and the income statement and tax return showed the following items. So, ito yung mga income natin for 20, uh, 20x8, 20x9, 20x10. So, mapapansin mo, mas malaki yung income tax natin dito. Yung, ay, sorry, yung accounting income natin dito by 1 million, pero in the succeeding years, mas mataas na yung taxable income ng by 500. Siyempre, obvious na yan. The effect is because of the equal recognition of the installment sale. Okay? So, pinapatanong sa atin, pinapaprepare sa atin yung entries, tapos yung computation ng uh, income tax at saka deferred tax. Okay? So, ang gagawin lang, ito. First is, i-plot natin yung taxable income. Mas maganda kasi mag-start tayo sa taxable income para hindi ka malilito doon sa transition ng or dun sa computation ng taxable at saka the deductible temporary difference. Okay? So, anong mangyari ngayon dito? So, basically, taxable income, i-plot lang natin. Okay? Yung TTD or yung taxable temporary difference, idagdag mo muna sa 20 x 8 para makuha natin yung accounting income, di ba? So, ganun lang naman yan. Kung gusto mo i-compute yung current tax expense, yung 3 million, multiply mo 35%, ito na yan. Kunin mo yung taxable temporary difference, multiply mo ng 35%, ito na yan. Okay? So, double check lang natin, labas tayo yung calcu para ma-double check natin kung tama ba yung amounts natin. So, 3 million, multiply natin ng 0.35, that's 1 million 50. So, 1 million 50 yan. Okay? Tapos, yung taxable temporary difference, obvious naman na yan eh. Pero, pakita lang natin. 1 million times 0.35, that's going to be 350. Okay? So, since parehas naman yung, ano, parehas naman yung tax rates natin, pwede mo ring gawin yung 4 million times 0.35, lalabas din yung 1 million 400,000. So, again, that is only applicable. Pwede mong gamitin yung ganong computation for income tax expense or total tax expense kung pare-parehas yung tax rate. Kasi pag nagkataon, iba yung tax rate ng current iba sa, doon sa deferred, then hindi mo na pwedeng magamit yun to compute for the total tax expense. So, the alternative computation there is to get 1,050,000 na current tax expense na si-add mo yung 350. Okay? Na deferred tax expense para makuha mo yung 140. Okay? Yan siya. Next for... 20x9, syempre, 550 yung nandito. So, yan yung basis mo ngayon ng current tax expense. 5,500,000, multiply mo ng 0.35, lalabas yung 1,925. Okay? So, yun siya. So, 1,925, tapos, reversal ng taxable temporary difference. In other words, reversal ng deferred tax liability. So, yung 500,000, Multiply mo ng 0.35, lalabas yung 175 ton. So, as a result, diba, sabi natin kapag nag-reverse tayo ng deferred tax liability, ang, ang gagawin is mag-recognize tayo ng uh, credit sa deferred tax expense, meaning deduction siya, or recognize ka na lang ng separate na deferred tax benefit, deduction pa rin naman yun. Okay? So, ang lalabas ay 1750. Okay? So yun, 1,750, pwede mo rin gawin yun by multiplying 5 million by 0.35. Okay, again, pwede lang yun mangyari sa computation natin in this case kasi parehas lang yung tax rates. Hindi naman magbabago. Gawin mo din siya for 2x10, same lang kasi same amount naman. So 7 million, 7 million tayo dito, multiply mo ng 0.35, lalabas yung... Um, for 2,450 para sa income tax expense. Tapos for the current tax expense, 7,500,000 times 0.35. Lalabas yung 2,625. Okay, so ibig sabihin, yung 500 din na yun, same din lang dito. Deduction naman siya ulit. Okay? So yan yung item natin dyan. Next tayo. Journal entries naman. Okay, so what will be our journal entries here. 
Okay, so 20x8. Journal entry for 20x8 is to recognize income tax expense and credit income tax payable. Basically, ito yung um, ang tawag dito? Ito yung ating baba, yung babayaran natin currently. Okay, so yun siya. Uh, mas maganda kasi gumamit ka na lang ng isang account title. Okay? So, 1 million 50, 1 million 50. Tapos, to recognize the deferred tax liability that's going to be recognized as debit to income tax expense. Pansin mo, hindi siya gumagamit ng account title na deferred tax expense or deferred tax benefit. Okay? Kasi, kung titignan mo kasi strictly, ha, strictly considering na ginagamit natin yung um, ginagamit natin yung account title, isa lang naman talagang account title natin sa accounting for expenses. Yun yung income tax expense. Okay? Pero for presentation purposes, again, ha, for presentation purposes, you can use the deferred tax expense and deferred tax benefit para mahati mo yung pertaining to the current portion at saka yung amount that is deferred as a result of the deferred tax liability. Okay? Kaya dito, yung 350 na to, this pertains to the deferred tax liability. Okay? So, yun lang yung entry mo. Pulating natin ng 20x9. Recognize ko ulit ng income tax expense. Okay? Income tax expense dito tayo. 1750. Yun lang kasi yung nirecognize mo expense during the period. That is based on your accounting income. Pero may reversal ng deferred tax liability, di ba? Which is going to be recognized as your income tax payable. Okay? Para minsanan, recognize mo sa, mo sa dito. Okay? So, um, eh, tapusin lang natin. To extend, this is for um, income tax expense naman na 2,450. Ito yung based on the income tax during the period times 35%. Deferred tax liability ka dito. Tapos kayot ka ng income tax payable. Okay? So, yan yung item natin dyan. Okay. So, bago tayo mag-proceed, balikan lang natin yung nasa taas. Okay? Kasi baka sabihin nyo, Sir, bakit ganito yung entry mo? Okay? Bakit ganito yung entry mo? Yung dun sa baba, ang ginamit lang nila, payable, payable. Okay? Kasi, this is in the assumption that we are using different account titles for different components of income tax. Okay? Pero kasi, dito, sa baba, this is in the assumption na isang account title lang ang ginagamit. Okay? So, alternatively, kung gusto mo, pwede namang ang gawin mo din dito, wala namang issue. Okay? Debit ka ng deferred tax liability. Okay? Pagkatapos, ano gagawin mo dito? Pag dinebit mo yung deferred tax liability, this is going to be recognized as payable. Income tax payable. Ayan. Kasi dagdag siya sa payable during the period. Okay? Kapag naman ganito, recognize ka naman dito ng um, income tax expense. Tapos dito ka deferred tax asset. Okay. Bakit income tax expense ang rec... Oh, sorry. Income tax expense. Payable. Parang babawasan yung payable natin. Kasi ang mangyari nga is, i-recognize mo na yung reversal niya, so magdededact na tayo ngayong period, so it's going to be deducted against the payable. Basta ang pumapasok lang sa income tax expense natin, yung current amount based on the income tax natin. Okay, yung in accounting income natin dito. So wala namang kaso. Parang in this case, um, yung ating deferred tax liability, Okay, pag nag-reverse, it's going to be added to the payable. Okay, kapag ano yan, deferred tax asset yan, di ba? Siyempre, kunyari, assume natin, asset yan. So, income tax expense, kunyari, 2,450. Siyempre, kapag may reversal ka ng deferred tax asset dito, okay, so deferred tax asset natin here is, kunyari, 175 yan. So, kung nandito yung 175, nandito sa debit side yung, 145. Malamang mas mababa yung uh, tawag dito. Mas mababa yung payable. Kaya nakakredit din yung payable pero lower amount. Okay? Kasi pangbawas nga ng payable yung deferred tax liability. 
Kaya kung titignan mo dito, naka-debit yung income tax payable. Kasi pang bawas siya doon sa pabayaran na current tax during the period. Okay? So, yan yung 11 natin. Okay. Next. So, gawin naman natin siya, yun, yung sa deductible temporary difference naman. So, yung pinapakita natin kanina, computation. Okay, para maniwala lang tayo. Okay. So, in 20x8, JMP company received an advance rental payment naman of 600, which was subject to tax but reported in accounting income until 20x9. Okay, so parang ang labas, tinaksan na to ni, ni taxation. Pero sa point of view ni accounting, hindi pa. Okay, ayos ni, oh, sa accounting daw, until 20x9 pa. So, ibig sabihin, meron pang, um, or may deferred tax asset tayo dito or deductible temporary difference. Okay. So, anong gagawin natin dyan? So, first of all, kailangan nating i-determine kung ano yung mga various components natin para hindi tayo mahirapan sa pag-prepare ng journal entries. So, taxable income based on the problem is 5.6 saka 6.4. Okay. The difference between the two is basically the 600,000 na ni-recognize immediately for tax purposes pero hindi pa um, consider for accounting purposes. Okay, so this is Okay, so this is going to be um 5,600,000 na taxable income deductible temporary difference siya. So Anong gagawin dyan? I-deduct. Siyempre. Straight kasi pababa yung computation natin. Hindi naman tayo nanggaling sa accounting income. So, deductible temporary difference, i-deduct pa lang sa future, di ba? So, bawas natin dito para makuha natin yung accounting income na 500 or yung 5 million. Okay, tapos mag-reverse siya next year. So, yun yung result. Pag nag-reverse siya ngayon, i-add back mo naman siya para makuha mo yung accounting income. Computation ng ating current eh, deferred taxes, yun na rin yan. 5,600,000 times 35%, ito yan. 600,000 times 35%, yun yung 210 doon. Okay? Kaya mas mababa yung income tax dito. Okay? Yung total income tax, mas mababa. Okay? Kaysa sa current tax expense. Okay. So, ano ngayon ang gagawin doon? Pagdating ng 20x9, mag-reverse siya. So, magiging deferred tax expense. Madadagdagan yung total income tax expense. Okay? Kaya sa journal entries, sa 20, sa 20x8, recognize ka ng income tax expense. Tapos yun na rin yung payable mo. Okay? Kasi yun yung babayaran doon. Pero, debit ka ng deferred tax expense na 210 para i-recognize mo yung dagdag doon sa income tax expense during the period. Ay, dagdag, bawas, sorry. Bawas sa income tax expense during the period. Okay? Pagkatapos, sa 20x9, ang gagawin mo ngayon dyan, um, debit ka ng income tax expense kasi based on the computation, 2,450 lang. Ay, diba 2,450 yung total. Pero, i-reverse mo yung deferred tax asset, kaya ang income tax payable mo, mababawasan magiging 2,240. Kasi pang bawas nga itong 2,10 doon sa 2,450, diba? Kaya magiging 2,240 also equal to the amount that you're supposed to pay. Okay? So, yan yung item natin sa problem na yan. Okay? Basta, yun ang uh, basic computation natin. And journal entries. Okay. Ito, medyo mas madami na to. Okay? Kasi mas madaming component. So, ito yung uh, ganitong approach. Kahit naman ganyan yung pagkakapresent, pwede pa rin namang simulan mo sa taxable income. Pero ang problema nga, hindi mo nga alam yung start ng taxable income. So, pag nag-work pack ka, pwede naman i-plot mo lahat ng data na nandun sa accounting income tapos mag-work up ka pag sa taxable income kung yun ang gusto mo. Pero wala namang kaso. Basta alam mo kung paano yung computation. Basta alam mo kung paano yung treatment sa mga differences. Then, Madali na natin makakompute yan. Okay. So, in this case, we have uh, information about the accounting income per books. Tapos, uh, kukumputin natin yung anong mga required 
compute for the accounting income subject to tax. Okay, and the taxable income, prepare the entries to recognize the current deferred and uh, the current and deferred taxes, tapos partial income statement. Oh, sige. So, given this information, may accounting income tayo dito na 6 million. Okay, from there, before nating simulang hanapin yung temporary differences, hanapin muna natin yung mga permanent difference. Mabait yung problem kasi pinigay na agad, sabi, non-deductible expense, non-taxable revenue. So, yung non-deductible expense, automatic permanent difference na yon so, i-add back mo. Yung non-taxable revenue, automatic, hindi nga daw siya tataxan, so, bawas mo. Okay, so, makukuha mo na ngayon yung taxable income or yung accounting income subject to income tax. Ito na yun. Okay, so in this case, dahil iisa lang yung tax rate, 35% lang yung binigay, itong nakuha mong 6,200,000, pwede mo nang i-multiply ng 35%. Kukuha mo na agad yung ating total tax expense or yung income tax expense during the period. Okay? Next, hanapin natin yung mga differences. Okay. So sabi dito, Doubtful accounts. Okay. Unahin natin yung doubtful accounts. Ano ba ang doubtful accounts? Di ba, nag-recognize ka ng doubtful accounts, so meron ka nang na-recognize na expense. Okay? Dineduct mo na siya sa income or dun sa ating uh, accounting income. Pero for tax purposes kasi, ang bad debts, nire-recognize lang yan kapag actually incurred. Ibig sabihin may write-off na ng bad debts. Okay, or may write-off na ng receivables. So, ang nangyari, dinedact na natin, idededact pa lang in the future ni taxable or ni tax authority. So, this is going to be a deductible temporary difference. Okay? So, deductible temporary difference yan. Next, si warranty. Okay? Estimated warranty cost. Warrant. Wait lang. Palitan natin. Warranty cost. That has been recognized as expense in 20x8 when the product sales were made but is deductible for tax purposes when paid. So again, binawas na natin pero ibabawas pa lang in the future. So this is a deductible temporary difference. Okay? Accounting depreciation na 400,000, tax depreciation na 800,000. Okay. Since depreciation yung pinigay, Paano natin may evaluate kung ano siya? Kung siya ay taxable or deductible? Tignan natin anong effect niya doon sa ating uh, income. Kapag ang accounting depreciation ay 400 lang, as compared to tax depreciation na 800,000, anong income ang mas malaki? Malabang mas malaki yung accounting income, di ba? Based on our previous discussion, if accounting income is greater than taxable income, it will result to a deferred tax liability. So, ibig sabihin, yung difference ng dalawa, yung 800 at saka yung 400, which is also 400,000, that is a taxable temporary difference. <clears throat> Tapos, yung gross income on installment sales included in accounting income, but taxable only in 20x9 is a taxable temporary difference. Okay? Given na, sinabi na, taxable only in 20x9. So, it is taxable in the future. So, therefore, Itong dalawa, yung doubtful accounts at saka itong estimated product warranty and a deductible temporary difference. Tapos, yung components na itong tatlo, okay, syempre, pagbabawasin mo itong dalawang to, itong, itong items naman na to is taxable temporary difference. So, sa presentation, ito na. So, after mong makuha yung accounting income subject to income tax, kunin mo na yung taxable temporary difference which are the excess depreciation and the gross income on installment sales which are going to be taxable only in the future and then your deductible temporary difference or your DTD will be the doubtful accounts and the estimated warranty but ganun warranty cost 400 okay tapos makukuha mo yung taxable income so anong ginawa dyan 62 plus 400 plus 100 kaya magiging 67 siya minus 200 minus 400. So, babalik siyang 63. Okay? So, kumbaga parang um, tawag dito. Take note ha, kasi nanggaling tayo accounting income. So, reverse siya ha. So, 62 deduct 
So, minus 500 plus 600. Kaya, giging 63 siya. Okay? Take note. Baliktad ang treatment kapag nanggaling kang accounting income papuntang taxable income. Okay? So, baka sabi nung, oh, so, minus to nga rin, sir. Hindi. Add, ah, kasi nga, minus ito, o, oh, kasi taxable siya. Tapos, ito ang add mo. Pero kapag uh, nanggaling ka ng taxable income, yung, DD, yung DTD, ito ang minus. Yung TTD, yun yung plus. Okay? Ayan. Basta ganun na. Huwag makakalimutan yan. Okay. So, with that, pwede ka nang gumawa ng computations ng taxable components. Kasi nakuha mo na yung, ito, di ba? Yung accounting income subject to tax, multiply mong 35%, yun na yung income tax expense. Yung total na TTD, ito, yung 500, multiply mo siya ng 35%, yun na yung deferred tax expense. Okay, also known as your deferred tax liability. Tapos yung 600 times 35%, yun yung 210, yun yung deferred tax benefit or your deferred tax asset. Okay? So, journal entry will be like this. Okay? So, recognize mo yung income tax expense to 170, yun yung total income tax expense. Okay? Pwede kang mag-recognize ng Uh, deferred uh, ng income tax payable diretsyo na dito which is equal to the total amount na babayaran mo recognize mo yung deferred tax asset tapos deferred tax liability okay so yan yung item natin dyan alright 14 tayo so this is uh, same Uh, requirement ulit, uh, computation journal entries. Okay? So, so the company reports pre-tax accounting income of 5 million for the year ending December 31. This income includes uncollected installment receivable. Okay? Of 500,000. The company's uh, installment sales are taxable upon collection. So, ito tax. So, baga, this is a taxable temporary difference. On December 31, the pre-tax income of the company was 6 million, which includes uncollected installment receivable of 300,000. The installment receivable of 500,000 last year was collected in 20x9. So assume the tax rate of 35%, what are we going to do? Okay. So ganito siya. Uh, start tayo ng taxable income. Okay, kasi sinab... Uh, actually, pwedeng hindi rin naman. Pwedeng i-start mo na sa accounting income kasi given naman na. Pre-tax accounting income, 5 million ng 20x8. So, kaya may 5 million doon. Okay. Pagkatapos, um, may kasama daw siyang... Yung 5 million daw na yon may kasamang 500,000 na installment receivable which will be taxable only upon collection. So, in this case, it is a taxable temporary difference. So, yung 5 million natin na accounting income, may kasamang 500,000. So, kung papunta ako ng taxable income, ito ay dededact ko sa 5 million na accounting income for me to get the taxable income na 4 million 500,000. Okay? During 20x9, dalawa ang nangyari. Nag-reverse yung 500,000 na previously taxable temporary difference tapos may ba, may panibagong 300,000 na taxable temporary difference which is yung panibagong installment sales na nangyari nung 20x9. Okay, so basically ang mangyari diyan 6 million yung ating accounting income, yung reversal of TTD magiging um since paakyat tayo doon magiging add back no. Okay, add back tayo doon. Tapos ito, magiging minus. So, 6 million um, plus 500,000 minus 300,000, you will get 6,000. Okay. So, computation, since iisa lang naman ang tax rate, 35%, straightforward for 5 times 35%, 500,000 times 35%, 5 million times 35%, ito na yan. Tapos, 6,000 times 35%, 300 times 35%, 500 times 35%, 6 million times 35%. Ito na yan. Okay. So, what will be our journal entries? So, journal entry for 20x8 will be like this. Okay. Debit tayo ng income tax expense and credit tayo ng income tax payable to recognize the 
current portion of the tax. Tapos, recognize tayo ng 175 na deferred tax liability which is going to be considered as the deferred portion. Pero sa income tax expense pa rin pinasok. For 20x9, um, sineparate na natin. Okay? Sineparate. Pinag-merge na natin. Kasi ganito din lang ang, ang mangyari dyan eh. ba? Diba? Pwede naman ang gawin mo, yung deferred tax liability dito, dalawa, isang debit, isang credit. I-debit mo yung i-debit mo yung 175, i-credit mo yung 105. Okay? Net effect 70 din naman yun. Edi diyan na lang, minsanan na lang. Basta ang result niya, madadagdagan yung income tax payable natin. Okay? Nang 70 as a result of the recognition of the reversal of the uh, income or sorry, reversal of the deferred tax liability last year. Okay, so yun yun. Okay. Next, 15. Okay. So, ano ang tinatanong dito? Same ulit. Compute ulit tayo ng deferred tax. Uh, asset naman to Asset daw. Okay. Double check lang natin. So, pre-tax accounting income is 7 million. Okay. An unearned rent income of 800,000 is excluded from this income. So, hindi daw natin sinama. The company follows the cash basis of accounting for tax purposes and the accrual basis for financial accounting purposes. Okay. Sige. So, kaya hindi pa sinama ni kaya hindi pa sinama ni accounting yung 800 kasi advance nga daw siya, di ba? Advance collection. So, liability pa niya. Pero for tax purposes, na tax na yan. Okay, so point of view ni ano, sa so point of view ni accounting, deductible temporary difference siya. Okay? Deductible temporary difference kasi in the future kapag um i-declare na natin, i-declare na niya as income 'yan, hindi naman na itatax ni uh ang taxing authority. Kaya siya magiging deductible temporary difference. Okay? So, nung 20x9 Nung nangyari ng 20x9? On December 31, 20x9, the accounting income is 8 million. The unearned rent income uh, was included in this income. So, ibig sabihin na i-recognize niya as income. Pero hindi na siya tataksan ni uh, taxing authority. So, deductible temporary difference siya. On the same date, the unearned rent income is 1,500,000. Okay? Moreover, the company reported estimated warranty na 500 on December 31, 20x9. The warranty cost is only deductible for tax purposes when actually paid. Okay? As of December 31, no warranty payments were made. Assume uh, that the tax rate is 35%. Okay. Sige. So, ano ngayon ang mangyari? For 20x8, plot muna natin si accounting income na 7 million. Okay? Eh no, 7 million sabi dito. So problem. 7 million. Yung 800,000 is a deductible temporary difference kasi ma-deduct 'yan or magagamit as a deduction ni uh, accounting or ni ng company for tax purposes kasi advance collection ng parang advance collection of tax ni taxing authority 'yon. So daw giging deductible temporary difference. Okay? Another reason kung bakit siya DTD, kasi kung iisipin mo, parang ganito yan. If the tax base, di ba parang pag, di ba, unearned income to, so liability ang treatment. Okay. So ang liab, kung liability yan, para maging deferred tax asset siya, ang decision guide mo is, kailangan yung carrying value ng liability mas mataas sa, carry, sa tax base, di ba? So ang carrying value ng liability ay 800,000. Pero ang tax base niya zero na. Bakit zero? Kasi nataksan na nga siya, 'di ba? So zero na yung tax base niya. So ibig sabihin, um the carrying value of the liability is greater than the tax base. So ang result niyan is it's going to result to a deferred tax. Ay, sorry. Deferred tax asset or deductible temporary difference. <coughs> Okay. So, yun yun. Kaya, DTD talaga siya. 
pwede rin kung gusto mong kung gusto mo namang gamitin yung income tax approach, eh ba? Diba, sinabi nga, 700,000 yung accounting. For tax purposes daw, naisama na to. So, ibig sabihin, mas mataas na yung, account, yung, yung tax income. So, taxable income is greater than accounting income. So, ibig sabihin, result din yan ng deferred tax asset. ba diba, nakalagay yan dun sa criteria, yung sources na diniscuss natin nung last time. Okay, so, bahala ka nang mag-discarte kung ano ang gagamitin mong pang-decision guide. Are you going to use the balance sheet approach or you're going to use the income statement approach? In any case, parehas ang magiging um, inclusion mo dyan. Okay. Sige. So, in that case, ito yung makukuha nating amount. Yung 20x9 lang ang medyo trivial, no? Saan natin nakuha yung 2 million? deductible temporary difference. Kasi sinabi ng problem, di ba nakolekta na daw yung 800. Pero, as of 20x9 daw, yung balance ng unearned rent income is 1,500,000. So, ibig sabihin, may panibago na naman na na-recognize na unearned income that was uh, not yet recognized as income for accounting purposes pero na-recognize na as income for tax purposes. Kaya, may 1,500 doon. Tapos, mayroon pang estimated warranty na 500. Okay? That is also a deductible temporary difference. Paano ulit natin nalaman na deductible temporary difference yan? Kasi, ang carrying value ng estimated warranty as a liability is 500. Ang tax base niyan, zero. Bakit? Kasi hindi pa siya nirecognize for tax purposes. Irerecognize pa lang siya in the future. So, deductible siya in the future. Okay? So, 1,500. Plus 500 dito, lalabas yung 2 million. Kaya may panibago tayong deductible temporary difference na 2 million in 20x9 at may reversal tayo ng 800 ng, ng 20x8 okay, during 20x9. Okay? So as a result, ito yung magiging computations natin. Uh, ba, paano, muna, paano muna natin na-compute yung 9.2? Okay, 9.2 is computed as yung 8 million na to, yung reversal of deductible temporary difference natin, ibabawas. Tapos i-add back mo tong deductible temporary difference kasi sa future pa nga lang i-deduct. So, uh, 8 million minus 800,000 plus 2 million. Okay, so malalabas yung 9.2. Okay, so yun yan. Tapos, compute na ulit natin kasi 35% yung tax rate. Pare-parehas lang naman. So, 7.8 times 35%, 800 times uh, 35%, 7 million times 35%. Ito na yan. 9.2 times 35%, 2 million times 35%, 800 times... Wait lang. Parang baliktad. Ay, tama lang. Kasi benefit ang usapan. 2 million times 35% is 700,000. Ha? Kasi pag ganun siya. Okay, yung 800 reversal, kaya magiging deferred tax expense na siya during the period. Okay. So, journal entries is ito na. So, during 20x8, recognize mo yung payable, tapos babawasan mo yung deferred tax expense as a result of the recognition of deferred tax asset. For 20x9, de debit ka ng income tax expense na 2.8 kasi yun yung actual na, comp na compute natin, pero mag-debit mag ka ng deferred tax asset na 4.2. Sa muna kuha yung 4.2, 700 na additional deferred tax asset minus 2.80 na um, reversal of deferred tax asset. So, ang labas niya, net effect 4.20. So, as a result, payable natin is 3.220. Okay? 3.220 income tax payable. Okay, so punta tayo dun sa next item. So, we go to... Um, this is a discussion on the, de the determination of your deferred tax liability as a result of the revaluation of an asset. Okay, so um, isa kasi sa kailangan nating tandaan as provided in your sources of deferred taxes, no? Di ba sabi natin doon sa 
taxable temporary difference kapag yung carrying value ng asset ay mas mataas sa tax base it is going to result in a deferred tax liability and one of the reason kung bakit mas tataas ang ating carrying value kaysa sa tax base ng asset is because nagre-value tayo ng asset so kapag magre-value ka ng asset obviously mas mataas na yung carrying value mo the difference okay as a result of revaluation also known as your revaluation surplus is going to result in a taxable temporary difference. Okay. So, in this problem, sabi doon, may equipment daw tayo na 6 million, depreciated siya using, using straight line, uh, based on a 15-year life with no residual value. Noong 20x8, uh, after 5 years of depreciation, the equipment was revalued at a replacement cost of 6,750. So, yun na daw yung replacement cost natin. Income tax rate is 35% and the company presented income before taxes of 2550 for 20x8. Okay, using the information above daw, ano yung, ay, natin ko compute yan. Okay. Since ang binigay sa atin ay replacement cost, hindi binigay sa atin yung sound value or fair value. Okay, so... What are we going to do? We are going to compute for the revaluation surplus using the tabular approach, okay? By depreciating the replacement cost. Okay. So we start first with uh, plotting the cost under replacement cost and the historical cost for us to get the appreciation. So yun na yung 6,750 dito, 6 million, tapos 750 dito. Kasi yun yung difference. Next is kunin mo kung may residual value na binigay. Wala naman. Okay, wala ka residual value. So we go to the depreciable amount. The depreciable amount is now equal to same pa rin. Kasi kikerry forward mo lang. Ikikerry mo lang pababa yan. Kung yun may accumulated depreciation, so accumulated depreciation here is already 2 million. Saan nakuha yung 2 million? Di ba syempre pag magkakompute ka, kukunin mo lang yung according to the problem, di ba? Sinabi 6 million. Pagkatapos 15 years. So divide by 15. So 400 per year. Tapos 5 years mo na siyang ina-depreciate. So 2 million yun. Okay? So with that, kunin mo kung ilang percent or kung ilang percent na yung depreciation ng ating asset. Okay? Sinabi kasi 15 years yun. Tapos 5 years na daw siyang ina-depreciate. So 5 divided by 15, that's already 1 third depreciated. So, yung one-third na yon gawin mo din siya for replacement cost. So, multiply mo yung one-third doon sa 6,750, lalabas yung 2 to 50. So, kumbaga, parang ratio and proportion nung ating uh, ratio and proportion nung ating depreciation. Okay? Yan. Tapos, ang next mong gagawin, compute natin pa baba. So, the um, remaining depreciable amount is 4,5 as compared to 4 million kung gumagamit tayo ng cost pa rin. So, the appreciation is 500,000. Since uh, 500,000 yung lumabas, yan na yung ating, yan na yung ating um, revaluation surplus. So, the revaluation surplus is 5 million, uh, sorry, 500,000, which will be um, split between its two components. It will be the deferred tax liability component and the Revaluation surplus after tax component or yung totoong revaluation surplus lang talaga. So, 500,000 times 35%, 175 yun. Kaya 175 ang deferred tax liability. Tapos, 325 na lang ang gagawin mo dun na uh, revaluation surplus. Okay? So, from there, magkocompute tayo ng taxable income natin at saka accounting income. Ito yung lalabas. Kasi sinabi, Yung income before depreciation daw, sabi sa problem, uh, 2,550. Ito yun, no? Ito, 2,550. Okay? Ang depreciation natin, okay, ang, dip, ang depreciation natin, ay, tira lang, income, ano bang sabi? The company presented income before taxes. Income before tax naman pala. Dapat dito yun. Ayun o, no, nakalagay income before tax. Bakit after tax yung ginawa ko? 
Income before tax. So, balitan natin. This is 2,550. Okay. So, income before depreciation. So, sa taxable, wala ding difference yan. 2,550 din yan. Okay. So, ang next ang gagawin, mag-recognize tayo ngayon ng depreciation. Okay? Depreciation natin using accounting is gagamitin natin yung 4,500,000 tapos 10 years na lang yung may iwan, di ba? Kasi 15 years yung original na gamit na natin yung 5 years. So, diretso na lang 4,500,000 divided by 10 years is 450. Okay? Sa point of view ni taxable, hindi naman nagbago. Hindi tayo nagpalit. Kaya, yung dating depreciation niya pa rin na 400 per year. Okay? So, kung 2,550 yan, bawasan natin ng 450. This is going to be 2,10. 2,100,000. Okay? Tapos dito, lalabas dito ay 2,150. Okay? So, yan yung ating item dyan. So, ito yung income after depreciation. Okay? So, our current tax expense here is going to be based on 2,150. Okay? So, mag-iba yung sagot natin dyan. Kasi, that's 2,150 times 0.35. That's supposed to be um, 752,500. So, lagay natin 752,500. Yung deferred tax benefit, bakit siya magkakaroon ng deferred tax benefit? Kasi magre-reverse yung portion nung ating uh, revaluation surplus. Okay? Saan mo nakuha yun? O, di, di ba sabi doon, revaluation surplus after tax is 3 to 5. So, 325,000. Ang reversal niyan is in the same pattern as the, the condition of depreciation. So, 10 years din yun. So, divide mo ng 10. That's 30 to 500 per per year. Sorry. 30 to 500 per year times 35 percent. That's going to be. Actually, pwede rin direct join mo na lang ito. Yung deferred tax liability para mas madali. Ang gawin mo na lang dyan is uh, 175 divide natin ng 10. Ganun na lang. 7,500. Kasi pwedeng ang gawin mo yung 50. Di ba pansin mo saan nanggaling yung 50? Di ba 450 dito, 400 lang dito. So 50 talaga yung difference. Okay? So 50,000 times 0.35 talabas yung 7,500. Or pwede rin, i-amortize mo tong deferred tax liability, 175. Divide natin ng 10 years, 17,500 din yan. So it's going to be a deferred tax benefit kasi magre-reverse yung for tax liability. Okay? So, ang income tax expense natin ngayon based on 2,1, 2,100,000 times 0.35 labas yung 7,35. So, 7,35. Okay. So, 7,35 yung income tax expense, deferred tax benefit ito, tapos current tax expense yan. Okay? So, pag, ano, magbabalance din lang naman yan. Okay, so as a result, what is our journal entry? Again, papalitan lang natin yung amounts. The deferred tax liability na 17,500 will be debited kasi mag-reverse tayo ng portion ng deferred tax liability. Revaluation surplus, mababawasan ng 50,000. Yun yung difference ng depreciation dito. Okay? Or basically, yun din yung amortization ng 500,000 na uh, revaluation surplus. Income tax expense ulit is 735. Sorry, palitan lang natin to. Tapos ang income tax payable natin is 750 to 500. Okay. So yun yung item natin dyan. So balance na. Bakit retained earnings ito? Kasi take note, revaluation surplus will be um, realized directly in equity. Kaya retained earnings ang papasokin yan. Similar to what we learned in revaluation.
previously. Okay, so yan yung answer natin dyan. Okay, so with that, those are the comprehensive na items. We can now go to the multiple choice questions na paisa-isa lang yung tinatanong. Okay, so let's go to number 17. So it says there for the year ended, December 31, Talisay Company reported pre-tax financial income of 9,500,000. Its taxable income was 9 million. The difference is due to accelerated depreciation for income tax purposes. The income tax rate is 32% and Talisay made estimated tax payments during 20x5 of 1 million. Magkano dapat ang ire-report na current tax expense? Okay. So kung ang pre-tax financial income is 9,500,000 and the taxable income is 9 million, and ay binigay naman yung 9 million, di ba? Okay. Pagkatapos, 32% yung tax rate. Okay. So kung ang tinatanong ay current tax expense, edi diretso lang natin. Labas yung calculator. Di ba current tax expense is uh, you get the taxable income na 9 million, multiply natin ng 32%. So that's 2880. Diretsyo na, letter A. Okay, hindi naman complicated yung computation, sundan lang natin yung binigay na information. Okay. Next tayo. Question number 18. For the year ending December 31, 2005, the company reported pre-tax income na 12 million, taxable income is 14 million. The difference is due to rental received in advance. Rental income is taxable when received. Okay? So, kaya tinaksan na agad ni taxable, hindi pa tinataksan ni uh, for accounting purposes. The income tax rate is 32% and nagbayad daw siya ng 1 million. Magkano daw ang total income tax expense? Kung total income tax expense ang tinatanong, hindi kunin mo lang yung 12 million. Same lang naman yung tax rate. 12 million. Multiply natin ng 0.32. So, yun na yung 3, 4, 80. Again, pwede mong gamitin yung computation na to kasi isa lang ang tax rate na binigay. Pero kapag nagkataon, iba yung tax rate ng 12 million, iba yung tax rate ng 2 million na difference. Kasi pag nag-reverse sa next period, eh, iba na yung effective tax rate. Hindi pwedeng ganun ang computation mo. Gagawin mo, 14 million times 32 minus yung 2 million times kung ano man yung tax rate na applicable kapag nag-reverse na yung difference. Okay, so yun yung item natin dyan. Next. Okay, so we go to uh, this problem. Ang tinatanong sa atin, current tax expense. Okay, so the company has a pre-tax income of 15 million, tapos pinapacompute sa atin current tax expense. Considering na may mga items, so malamang ang intention ng problem is to uh, compute muna natin yung taxable income. Okay, so ipa-plot muna natin yung first yung 15 million. Okay. Pagkatapos, non-deductible expense. So ibig sabihin, pinawas natin pero hindi dapat i-deduct, so i-add back natin yung 2 million. Okay. Tapos ng taxable revenue, dinagdag pero hindi dapat, so bawasan natin ng 1 million. Okay? Estimated warranty cost that was recognized as expense in 20x5, but deductible for tax purposes when paid. So binawas na natin itong 1,500,000 for accounting purposes, pero hindi pa dapat for tax purposes. So i-add pa ulit natin yung 1,500,000. Okay? Tapos excess tax depreciation over financial depreciation na 500,000. So for tax depreciation daw, dapat magbawas pa tayo ng 500. So minus 500,000 to. So as a result, ang magiging taxable income natin ay 17 million. Okay? 17 million times 32%, you will get 5,440. So letter B ang sagot natin. 5,440. Okay. Next problem. So, medyo mas mahaba-haba. Okay. So, according to the problem, yung pinapakompute sa atin dito? Uh, deferred tax liability. Okay. So, deferred tax liability ang pinapakompute sa atin. 
So, kailangan nating hanapin kung ano yung mga sources ng deferred tax liability. So, according to the problem, we have equipment. Ay, wait lang. Bago natin tignan yan, basahin mo yan natin yung additional information. Kasi baka nagko-compute tayo, permanent difference pala siya. The difference between the book value and tax basis of the equipment is due to accelerated depreciation for tax purposes. So, temporary difference yun. The issuance premium, or the issuance, the insurance premium on officer's insurance policy is paid on December 31, 2025, and the amount is a non-deductible expense. So, this is permanent difference. The warranty liability is estimated warranty cost that was recognized as expense but deductible for tax purposes when actually paid. So, temporary difference. In 20X5, Caddis Company incurred 3 million for computer software cost considering the technical feasibility of the project. This was capitalized and amortized over 4 years for accounting purposes. Pero dinitak na daw as total expense for tax purposes. Okay, so this is also a temporary difference. Okay. So, hanapin natin ngayon yung deferred tax liability. Okay. So, kapag ang equipment, book value is 5,500,000, tax basis is 4 million. So, this is going to have a carrying value of an asset greater than the tax base. Diba? So, this is going to be a deferred, or a source of deferred tax liability. Deferred tax liability ang 1,500. Yung prepaid uh, officer's insurance na 50,000, that's going to be permanent difference. So, wala tayong gagawin dyan. Yung warranty liability na 500,000, that's a deferred tax asset or a source of deferred tax asset kasi carrying value of liability is greater than tax base. Okay? Kaya, deferred tax, uh, sorry, deductible temporary difference resulting to deferred tax asset. Yung, soft, yung computer software cost, this is also a temporary difference resulting or resulting from a difference in the treatment of the item. So in other words, ang dalawang source natin ng taxable temporary difference is yung 1.5 na to at saka yung 2.250. So 1.5 plus 2.250 times 0.32. 1-2, nilalabas na deferred tax liability letter A. Okay. So, syempre, kapag nagkamali ka ng ident pag-identify, hindi mo na makukuha yung tamang sagot. Kaya, ang, kaya diba ni-remind ko kayo before, laging tatandaan yung mga sources. Sources of deferred tax asset and sources of deferred tax liability kasi yun yung makakatulong sa inyo to determine kung ano yung deductible at saka taxable na temporary difference. Okay, sige. Proceed tayo. 21. Okay, Sagay Company provides the following tax effects of temporary difference at the end of 20x. Okay. Sige. So, yung current non-current classification dyan, para lang bigyan tayo ng idea kung magre-reverse na ba siya in the current future or hindi pa. Okay? So, sabi doon, evaluation allowance was not considered necessary. Uh, Sagay anticipates that 150 of the deferred tax liability will reverse in 20x6. Okay? So, deferred tax liability daw kapag nakaparentis na. In its December 31, 20x5 balance sheet, what amount should Sagay report as non-current deferred tax liability? Okay. Wala nang problema dyan. Presentation purposes lang naman yan. Ang sagot natin dyan, letter B pa rin. Diba? Basic rule, deferred taxes will, will always be presented as non-current regardless if it is going to reverse in the succeeding period. Okay. That is a matter of a provision of the standard. So kahit sabihin pa nung problem na yung 150 magre-reverse na next period, walang reclassification na mangyayari. Okay, so the answer for number 21 is still letter B. Okay, because uh, deferred taxes will always be uh, presented as non-current items, regardless of whether it is going to reverse in the current period or not. 22. Hmm. 
So for number 22, um, ito daw nangyari dito. So determine daw tayo ng pre-tax financial income. So ibig sabihin magsa-start tayo dito ng taxable income. So straightforward naman yung computation yan. Labas na lang tayong calculate. Okay. So according to the problem, So, the company is determining the amount of its pre-tax financial income for 20x5 by making adjustment to taxable income from the company's tax return. The tax return indicates taxable income of 15 million. So, start by 15 million. Okay. Tapos, um, of which tax liability of 4.8 was recognized. So, hindi naman na importante yung tax liability kasi um, ang hinahanap lang natin pre-tax financial income. Following is a list of items that may require okay, the determination of pre-tax income. As again, so first, accelerated depreciation for income tax purposes na uh, 2 million and straight line financial depreciation na 1,500,000. In other words, mas marami tayong binawas for tax purposes. May difference na 500,000 add back 500,000. Kasi papunta tayo ng financial income. Insurance premium of 100,000 on the life of an officer. Okay? Take note, pre-tax financial income ang tinatanong. Hindi, hindi sinabing pre-tax financial income subject to income tax. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng mga items na naisama sa accounting income, kailangan natin i-consider. So, if that was a deduction, okay, if that was a deduction of 100,000, hindi yan binawas for tax purposes, pero binawas yan for Um, accounting purposes. So, minus tayo ng 100,000. Okay. Next. Interest on treasury bills was not included in the tax return. During the year, La Carlota received 2,500,000 on this investment. Pwede add back natin yung 2,500,000. This is a permanent difference for tax or for interest. So, total 17,900,000 letter So regardless kung permanent or temporary yan, basta pre-tax financial income ang tinatanong, balikan mo lahat. Okay, so yan yung 22. 23, tayo. Okay, so ang sabi dyan is, ang pinapakompute sa atin? Uy, madami pala. Diba? Lima yung pinapatanong sa atin. Uh, pinapaharap sa atin, deferred tax liability, current tax expense, deferred tax liability at the end, uh, income tax expense, total income tax expense, tapos revolution surplus at the end. Okay, sige. So, solve muna natin, syempre. Okay. So, the first thing that we're going to do is to uh, compute for the revolution surplus. This is similar to the problem sa taas kanina. Okay? Yung na-discuss natin a while ago. So, building 5 million, Depreciated using straight line over 10 years with no residual value. On January 1, 20x5, uh, this is already 20x1, 20x2, 20x3. For 4 years na natin siyang dinedepreciate. Biglang nirevalue yung asset at i-replacement cost of 8 million. Again, replacement cost yung binigay. So, ang gagawin natin is i-depreciate pa natin yun. Okay? So, Uh, Pre-tax accounting income before depreciation is 9 million. So, dyan tayo magsa-start mamaya. Okay. The income tax rate is 32% and there are no other temporary differences at the beginning of 20x5. So, same table. Present natin yung cost. Residual value will be zero. Wala namang sinabi. So, the cost and the depreciable amount is going to be the same. Kunin natin yung accumulated depreciation. Siyempre, magsa-start ka muna doon sa at cost. Okay. So, yung at cost natin, saan natin nakuha yung 2 million, syempre, ang ginawa lang dyan is 5 million divided by 10 years. So, that's 500,000 per year. 20x1 hanggang 20x5, January yun, 4 years lang. So, times 4. Kaya 2 million. So, 2 million to, in other words, uh, either 2 million divided by 5 million, which is 40%, or 4 years divided by 10 years, 40% depreciated pa rin yan. So, ipoproject natin siya doon sa 8 million. 
So, 8 million times 0.4, kasi 40% depreciated na yung asset, that's 3,200,000. Kaya 3,200,000 yan. So, from there, makukuha natin sa dulo yung ating um, revaluation surplus. So, the revaluation surplus is 1,800,000. Okay. So, 1,800,000 yung revaluation surplus times 0.32 tax rate. So, ang ating deferred tax liability is 5.76. Okay. So, ngayon, this is going to be um, amortized okay, or uh, i-realize natin siya over the remaining life na 6 years. Okay. So, parang ang mangyari dyan, yung 1,800,000 na revaluation surplus divided by 6 years, 300,000 per year. So, ganun din, yung 576,000 na deferred tax liability divided by 6 years, 96,000 per year naman ang mag-reverse. Okay? So, anyway, ang gagawin natin is repair muna natin yung computation. Parehas yung income tax or yung net income before depreciation for accounting and tax purposes. Kasi sinabi sa problem, ang difference lang naman daw is depreciation. Okay? So, ang depreciation natin for accounting purposes may king 800. Saan mo nakuha yung 800? Diba kasi, kung ang carrying value is 4,800,000. Tapos ang natitirang years na lang na ay 6 years. That's 800 per year. Kung gagamitin natin yung original depreciation, 500 lang talaga yun. Yun yung original computation na 5 million divided by 10. So 500. So ang lalabas na net income for accounting purposes, 8,200,000. For tax purposes, 8,500,000. Okay. So how are we going to compute the current tax expense? Kunin mo yung 8,500,000. Yun yung tax income multiplied by 0.32. So that's 2,720. Saan mo nakuha yung deferred tax benefit? Ito yung sinabi nating reversal ng deferred tax liability. Basically, yun din yung difference na 300,000 sa depreciation. Multiply natin ng 0.32, yun din yung 96 dito. Magiging benefit na siya kasi magre-reverse yung deferred tax liability. Okay? So, ang income tax expense naman natin, yung 8,200,000 times 0.32, so yun, yun, 2,624, or basically, yan din yung uh, 2,720 minus 96. Okay. So, yun yung items. So, pwede na nating masagutan yung mga questions. Question number one, magkano ang deferred tax liability arising from the revaluation? So, yun yung sinolve natin kanina, 576, eh, letter B. Magkano yung current tax expense? Na-compute na natin yan, 2720, letter A. Magkano ang deferred tax liability on December 31, 20x5? Okay? Diba 576 nung beginning? Tapos, may 96 na magre-reverse. 96,000. So, ang may E1, 480. Kaya 480 sa ganun, letter B. Magkano ang total income tax expense? Yun yung 2624, letter A. Tapos last question, magkano yung revaluation surplus na may iwan? Magkano ba yung revaluation surplus na net? Ba yun yun? 1,224. Okay, 1,224 sa calculator. Divide natin ng 6 years. So, 204 yung mawawala. Okay? So, 1,224 minus 204. Minus 204. Okay, dyan. So, 1,020,000 na lang. Okay, so letter A. Sa so take note, the revaluation surplus will always be at net amount kasi tatanggalin natin yung deferred tax liability doon. Okay, so yun yung answer natin dyan sa case question. Okay. Next. So this is another comprehensive question. Papatanong, tinapatanong sa atin yung uh, current tax, deferred tax, tsaka uh, mga payables, okay? Sige, wala problema. Kaya, kaya natin yan. Even naman na yung mga information, so madali natin makuha yung item. Tapos considering na binigay na rin yung tax rate. So, wala tayo po problemahin dyan. Okay. So, dun sa problem daw, may pre-tax tayo na 400,000. Pre-tax accounting income. Okay? Binigyan tayo ng mga information regarding the permanent and temporary differences. Okay. So I think kailangan nating mag present ng computation dito. Okay. Ito na lang tayo. Bago natin sagutan.
Kukunin natin si pre-tax. Palitan natin yung kulay. Okay. So, si pre-tax accounting income natin is 400,000. Hanapin mo natin yung mga permanent difference. Okay. Permanent difference, sinabi doon, no? loss on expropriation of property na 140,000. Okay. Kasi yung Uh, mga ganyang klase ng losses, hindi naman talaga yan uh, considered as uh, deductible okay, for tax purposes. Okay, so that's going to be permanent difference. Ilagay na lang natin loss on expropriation. Expropri expropriation. Yan, para sure. Okay. So, ang gagawin mo dyan, i-add back natin yan na 140. Okay. Pagkatapos, uy, nangyari dun. Okay. Tapos, meron tayong non-deductible premium on life insurance of key employee. So, this is going to be uh, non-deductible expense. So, add back ulit yun na 24,000. Okay. So, yung loss, add back yung non-deductible expense at back din. Meron pa ba? Uh, interest income received on government security subject to final tax. So kung subject sa final tax, edi hindi na siya sa subject sa income tax. So this is going to be non sorry. Income, ay sorry, interest subject to final tax. Okay, lagyan ko na lang ng parenthesis para ibig sabihin mabawas natin 20,000. Kasi nang taxable item. Okay, next excess depreciation. Okay na yan. So yung mga yan na, so ito na yung pre-tax. Pre-tax income subject to income tax. So magkano yan? Diba start in calc you? That's going to be 400,000 plus 140 plus 24 minus 20. So that's 544,000. Okay. Next, kunin natin yung mga temporary difference. Okay. Temporary difference tayo dito. Kunain natin sabi doon, excess of accelerated depreciation used in taxation over straight line depreciation used in financial reporting. Okay? So, depreciation, excess depreciation. Ano yan? Yan ay taxable temporary difference. Okay? Bakit? Kasi mas mataas yung magiging financial income natin dyan. O yung accounting income kaysa sa taxable income. Okay. Next. Ilagay natin. Magkano difference nun? 40. Okay. Dahil nang galing tayo sa accounting income, bawas yan. Okay, next. Warranty expense accrued for financial reporting purposes but is taxable only when actually paid. So this is going to be warranty yan ay deductible temporary difference. So, add back natin yan. Ano yan? 60. Okay. Next, rent received in advance na 32. Advance rent. Okay. Diba 32? So, ano yung 32,000 na yan? For tax purposes, itatax na siya. Pero for accounting purposes, hindi pa. So, this is still a deductible temporary difference. Okay? So, dalawa ang source ng deductible temporary difference. Isa lang ang ating taxable. Tapos, quarterly income ng nabayaran, okay lang yan. Walang problema. Beginning balance of taxable temporary difference, beginning balance of deductible temporary difference. Okay? Sige. So, from there, kukunin mo na dito, makukuha mo na dito yung taxable income. Okay, so taxable income natin, start tayo dun sa 544. Pagkatapos, 
Bawasan natin ng 40,000. Dagdagan natin ng 92,000. Yung pinagsama ng dalawa. So 596 to. Okay. So from there, compute tayo. How much is the income tax expense? Pare-parehas lang yung tax rate, 30%. So total income tax expense. So total tax expense is going to be 596 times 32%. Ay, 30%. Okay. So that's 596 times 43. So, oops. Income tax. Ay, sorry. Taxable income pala yun. Ang gulo naman. Sorry, sorry. Taxable income pala yun. <laughs> Bakit ang accounting income natin is 544? Sorry, 544 lang. Maling na kopya ka. Okay, so again, 544 times 0.3. 163,200. Okay. Next tayo. Uh, deferred tax asset tayo. May deferred tax liability muna tayo. So, ang source lang natin ng deferred tax liability is yung 40,000. 40,000 times 30%. So, equal sign tayo dyan. This is going to be 4,8,12,000. 12,000. Okay. Tapos yung deferred tax asset naman natin is going to be 92. Kung pinagsamang deductible temporary difference times 30%. Hindi ko na kaya yung mental yan. 92,000 times 0.3 27,600. Okay. Tapos yung current tax expense. Ito yung kanina. Yung 5,96 times 30%. Okay. So, 5,96 times 0.3 That's 178,800. Yes. So, check natin. How much is the total tax expense? Total tax expense is 163,200. How much is the current tax expense? 178,800. How much is the deferred tax expense or benefit? So, ibig sabihin pinagsama. Okay? So, net nito, pagsamahin mo to, benefit ito na, wait, net benefit of pag pinagbawas mo to this is going to be 15600 no 15600 yun kaya ang sagot ay letter b okay how much is the current tax payable okay so current tax payable lagay na lang natin dito current tax payable okay that's going to be 178000 is 178800 Minus, sabi kasi doon sa problem may nabayaran na. Sabi, quarterly income tax payments na 80,000. So kung may nabayad na na 80,000, ang may iwan na lang dyan ay 98,800. Yan. So pang sure lang, calculate natin, 178,800 minus yung nabayaran na na 80,000. So 98,800. Okay? Yan. Tapos, how much is the deferred tax liability to be presented in the year-end statement of financial position? Okay, sabi kasi dun sa problem, may beginning balance of taxable temporary difference na 48. Okay, tapos nadagdagan pa siya ng taxable temporary difference ulit na 40. Okay, so parang ang labas dun, labas natin yung Lagay na lang natin dito. Wait lang. Ending balance of deferred tax liability. ba? Diba? Yung TTD natin beginning, 48,000. Okay, dagdag natin dyan yung na-recognize natin ngayon na 40. Tapos multiply natin ng 30%. 
Kasi wala namang sinabi na nag-reverse to, di ba? So, pag labas natin, compute natin sa calculator, that's going to be 88,000 times 0.3. That's 26,400. Letter C. Lagay na lang, 26,400. Tinanong din ba yung balance ng asset? Okay, sa ending balance din, type na rin natin of deferred tax asset naman. Ang beginning balance daw ng deferred tax asset, 36, ayun o, lagay doon. So, 36,000. Dagdag natin yung na-recognize ngayon na, di ba sabi, dalawa yan. Yun yung 60 at saka 32. So, 92. Tapos, times 30%. Okay. So, labas calc you. 36,000 plus 92,000. Times 0.3. So, that's 38,400. Okay. So, 38,400. That's letter D. Okay. Yan. So, yun yung mga. Yun yung answer natin dyan sa case na yan. Okay. Next, 30. So, isa lang yung tinatanong. Pre-tax income lang. So, parang yung kanina din. Okay. So, the company is... Determining the amount of his pre-tax accounting income for the year by making adjustment to taxable income from the company's income tax return. The tax return indicates taxable income of 400, of which 120 daw yung tax liability. Okay lang yan. So that's going to be, hanapin natin yung pre-tax income. So pwede gawin natin, diretsyo na lang natin sa calculator yan. 400,000. Okay, what are the items? Una, goodwill impairment loss not included as a deduction for tax return but may be deducted for financial accounting. So, add back natin si, uh, sorry, i-deduct natin si 140. Kasi hindi daw dineduct for tax purposes pero pwede daw i-deduct. Okay? Interest, income on savings and time deposit with private banks. So, hindi yan sinama for tax purposes, pero isasama mo yan for accounting purposes. So, plus 24,000 tayo dyan. Next, revenues from installment sales are recognized as uh, goods are sold but are taxed only when installment payments are collected. So, 160 yan, kasama na sa income. So, plus 160. Next, excess of depreciation recognized for financial reporting over depreciation recognized for taxation purposes due to Shorter depreciation period for financial reporting. So, 40,000. Expense pa tayo. So, minus 40,000. Tapos, um, bad debts, expense, recognize using allowance method. So, hindi pa yan binawas for tax purposes, pero ibabawas na natin yan for accounting purposes. So, net pre-tax income, 344. Letter B. Ayos. So, yun yung sagot natin. Next, uh, five questions ulit. Ito yung mga even information. Sabi doon, magkano deferred tax liability, deferred tax asset, income tax expense, current tax expense, deferred tax expense or benefit. So, net amount yun. Okay, sige. So, okay. So, in this problem, Um, we are asked to compute for five items considering we are given the differences tapos ano ang first item ang pinagay sa atin, pre-tax kasi no so, ibig sabihin pre-tax profit or accounting income so doon tayo magsa-start so yun ang starting point natin sa ating computation so pre-tax accounting income 4 million. Okay. Next tayo. Masahin natin yung mga additional information para alam natin kung permanent or temporary difference. So, development cost, kinapitalize daw, pero in expense siya for tax purposes. So, temporary difference. Straight line method of depreciation, SYD for tax purposes. So, the difference is temporary. Healthcare, at uh, Uh, incurred but are tax deductible only when cash is actually paid. So, this is temporary difference din. So, 
puro temporary difference tayo. Okay, sige. So, unahin natin yung so, puro temporary difference lahat to. Unahin natin yung computer software. Okay. So, yung computer software cost natin, sinabi kasi carrying amount higher than tax-based temporary difference. This is a taxable temporary difference. Okay. So, that's going to be ibabawas natin yan to million. Okay. Pagkatapos, machinery. Excess depreciation. Okay. So, 4 million ang carrying value tax base 24 taxable temporary difference din yan Okay magkano yon 16 Tapos yung healthcare liabilities Okay the carrying amount of the liability is greater than the tax base so this is a deductible temporary difference. So, add back natin yan once 800. So, this is already our taxable income. Plus lang ng kalki para sure. So, that's 4 million minus 2 million minus 1.6 plus 800. One million two hundred thousand. Okay, sige. So, sinabi walang temporary difference ng January. So, ngayon lang tayo magkocompute yan. Okay, so start muna tayo. Pili natin si current tax expense. Current tax expense is computed as one million two hundred thousand times tax rate 30%. Uh, 1 million 12,000 times 0 0.3, 360. Deferred tax liability. So deferred tax liability natin dyan is going to be yung dalawa. 36 times 30%. One, ay, wait lang. Mali ah, teka lang. Hindi ko pala pinawas yung buong... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Mali, mali, mali. Excess depreciation lang yun ah. Sorry, kinuha ko kasi yung buong difference ng carrying amount at saka tax base. Sorry. Dapat nakukunin lang natin yung pertaining to this period lang. Itong computer software cost, walang problema. Lahat talaga yan. Pero ito, hindi. Kasi ang sinabi, 4 million carrying amount, tax base 248. So, may 1.6 na difference. Ang dahilan daw ay SYD sa straight line tayo for SYD for tax purposes. So, straight line tayo dito. Okay. So, ang kailangan nating makuha dyan is yung difference doon sa depreciation. Okay. Sige. So, this is going to be wait, anong, ano na ba to? Kasi hindi pwedeng Diretso eh. Ano ba yung ginawa ko? Wait lang. Masama naman. Mali yung, na, mali yung napindot ko kanina. Kasi tama yun. The difference is basically because of the difference in depreciation. So yun na nga yun. Tama na siya. 
Mali yung napindot ko kanina. So, 3,600,000 times 30%. 1,080,000. Kulat ako kasi biglang iba yung amount kanina. Anyway. Nagkamali yata ako ng napindot na amount. Anyway. Tapos, deferred tax asset is going to be yung 800,000 times 30%. Ano na yan, no? 240. Okay. Tapos yung total income tax expense. That is either pag add mo na lang to, ito plus ito minus yun, or basically ang uh, gawin mo na lang is since parehas naman yung tax rate, kunin mo na lang yung 4 million doon, tapos multiply mo lang 30%. That's going to be uh, 120. Or 1,200,000. Double check lang natin para sure. 4 million times 0.3. 1,200,000. Alternative diyan yung 360 plus 1,080 minus 240. 1 to din lang. Okay. Next tayo. So, How much is a deferred tax liability on December 31? That's 1,080,000, letter C. How much is a deferred tax asset? That's 2,40,000, letter D. How much is the income tax expense? That's 1,2,000, letter C. Current tax expense, that's 3,60,000, letter A. And the deferred tax benefit, kunin mo yung difference ng dalawang to. That's going to be 1,080,000 minus 2,40,000. That's 8,40,000, letter C. So, yan yung sagot natin dyan. Okay, next. Uh, next set of questions. Uh, ngayon, ang problema, hindi, ang given sa atin, balances, hindi siya comparison ng tax base at saka carrying value. So, basically, magkakaroon tayo ng different approach ngayon on how we are going to answer the problem. Ilan yung tinatanong? Lima din. Ay, anim. Okay. So, pre-tax is 4 million, tapos ito yung mga items. Okay. Basahin mo na natin yung information para maintindihan natin. So, ang items natin na i-analyze natin will be yung trade receivable, prepaid insurance, building, and estimated liability and warranty. Okay. So, the company recognizes revenues from service fees as Services are rendered but are taxable only when cash is collected. Total collections in 20x2 amount to 3,2. Okay, so ibig sabihin, ang problema lang natin dyan, um, kukunin natin yung revenue for accounting purposes pero kukunin natin yung collection for tax purposes. Okay. Next, prepaid insurance uh, account pertains to an expired portion of life insurance premiums taken on the life of key personnel. Okay. Uh, The company is the irrevocable beneficiary. So therefore, this is a permanent difference. Okay? The building was acquired January 1, 20x1 and this is depreciated over estimated useful life of 20 years with no residual value. Straight line tayo for financial reporting pero double declining balance for taxation purposes. So magkakompute tayo ng difference doon. Then warranty expense natin is recognized at the time the goods are sold but are deductible when actually paid. Tax deductible, warranty expense for 20x to amounted to 160. So, ibig sabihin, yan yung i-recognize for tax purposes. Pre-tax income in 20x to is 4 million. Tax rate is 30%. Okay, so magsa-start na naman tayo sa 4 million yan. Okay, sige. So, dito tayo sa pre-tax. Okay, pre-tax accounting income. Pre-tax accounting income, 4 million. Permanent difference, isa lang naman yan, yan yung life insurance. Kano daw yun? Um, from, from 400, From 400, naging 
480. Tapos sinabi, the total premium speed in 20X2 were 200,000. So, ang kailangan natin gawin dyan is tang hanapin natin kung magkano yung na-expense na portion. Okay? So, using our calculator, parang ganito yan. Beginning balance is 400. Tapos, nag-ayad pa ng 200. So, 600 na lahat yun. Ending balance is 480. So, minus 480. So, 120 ang na-expense. So, kailangan nating i-add back yung 120. Okay. So, gamit ka lang ng t-account para makuha mo kung magkano yung may expense. Okay? So, ganun lang naman yan. So, 120. Again, paano nakuha yung 120? Kasi ang ginawa natin, beginning is 400. Nagbayad ka pa daw ng 200. Premium speed eh. So, malamang sa prepaid muna siya pupunta. So, biging 600 yun. Tapos 480 yung ending balance. So, ibig sabihin ang na-expense, 120 lang. Okay? Pero that is a permanent difference on the life insurance. Kaya kailangan natin siyang i- add back. Okay, add back natin siya kasi uh, hindi naman siya pwedeng i-deduct for tax purposes. Okay. Next, punta na tayo sa, so this is already the pre-tax accounting income subject to income tax. That's for 120. Okay. Next tayo, temporary difference. Okay, so isa-isahin natin yung mga temporary difference. Okay, so una, yung revenue. Okay, sinabi, uh, revenues from service fees, uh, services are rendered, ay sorry, recognized as revenues as rendered, but are taxed only when cash is collected. Total collection for 20x2 amounted to 3,200,000. Okay, so, hanapin natin ngayon yung temporary difference arising from the Earnings. Okay. So, parang ganito ngayon siya. Hanapin natin kung magkano yung na-earn. Yung na-earn lang, ha? Okay. So, labas ulit tayong calcio. Okay. So, di ba, ang beginning natin, 4,800,000. Okay. Supposedly, dadagdag natin dyan yung na-earn. Okay. Pero, ang, ang binigay lang sa problem kasi is yung collected. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, dun tayo sa other side ng t-account, Unahin muna natin kunin yung sa credit side. Tapos ibawas natin yung 4.8 para makuha natin yung earned portion. Okay? So parang ganito siya ngayon. 6 million. Sorry. 6 million yung ending balance. Okay? Dagdag natin yung collection na 3 million 200,000. So 9 to yun. Ibawas natin yung 4.8 na beginning balance. So 4.4 ang na-earned during the period. Okay. So basically, ano ang ibig sabihin nun? Earned is equal to 4,400,000. Collected is 3,200,000. So So, may difference na 1,2. Okay. So, yun siya. So, ano, nga rin, ano ngayon yung 1,2 na yan? Basically, pwede nga rin gawin mo. Pagbawasin mo na lang yung dalawa, no? Ganun din lang naman yan. Pero, basically, anong concept yan? Meron tayong 1,2 na na-earn. Okay? Pero, hindi pa na-collecta. So, ibig sabihin, actually, that's also the increase in your That's also the increase in your receivable. Okay? So that's going to be not yet taxable for Okay, so 1,200,000 yung portion na na-earn na hindi pa itatax for tax purposes kasi hindi pa nga nakokolekta. That's also the increase in your receivable. Okay. Next. Sige. Yung building natin, okay, building net of accumulated depreciation, so from 38 naging 36. So, ibig sabihin, ang ating depreciation for accounting purposes is 
going to be 2 million. Okay? Ang gamit, di ba? No residual value naman, so walang problema. So, ang gagawin lang natin is parang double, di ba? Double the straight line. Pero of course, 20x1 pa kasi yan. Ito ay 20x2 figures already. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan mag-ingat sa computation. So, if the carrying amount, so kung 2 million ang ating depreciation per year for straight line purposes, ibig sabihin, nung binil natin yung building, that's 40 million, di ba? So, 40 million. Okay. Ang useful life daw natin ay 20 years. So, dapat ang depreciation rate natin for double declining is 2 over... 2 over 20. Okay? 2 over 20. Or basically 10%. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, ganito. 40 million times 0.9. Kasi tatanggalin na natin yung na-depreciate nung last year. Tapos, times 0.1. So, 3, 6 ang depreciation natin for the second year. Okay? So, basically, ganito yun. Tax depreciation is equal to 36 Okay? Pagkatapos, yung accounting depreciation depreciation is 2 million lang. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kailangan natin magbawas pa ng 1.6 yung difference. Okay, so yun yung ating difference. Take note, that basta din ay deduct na nanggaling sa accounting income, that's going to be a taxable temporary difference. Okay, tapos yung huli, warranty. Okay, warranty expenses recognized at the time the goods are sold but are deductible only when actually paid. So ang nangyari, yung warranty obligation, 1-1-20 naging 1-2. Okay, so... Ilagay na lang natin, i-plot lang natin yung mga information. So, hahanapin lang natin yung expense. Okay. So, sabi dito, ang nagastos daw, tax deductible warranty expense for 20x2 is 160. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin dyan, di ba parang ganito, 1120 yung beginning plus the expense minus the payment is equal to the ending, di ba? So, since ang pinigay lang sa atin is ending at saka yung actually paid, i-work back natin yung ating expense. So, 1, 2, or 1,200,000 yung ending, dagdag natin yung 1,60 na binayaran. Kasi bawas natin yung 1,120 na beginning. So, 2,40 ang expense. Okay? So, expense, 2,40, tapos paid, 1,60. So, may difference na 1240 minus 160 is 80 ba? 80. 80 is actually the increase also here. Okay? Pero yun lang, syempre kailangan nating i-explain kung um, paano nakuha yung or ano yung significance ng 80. Okay? So yun siya. So 80 therefore is the, is going to be the difference between the uh, accounting and the taxable income. Pero this time this is going to be added back. Okay? Kasi sobra yung naibawas natin for tax purposes. Okay. So, yan yan. Um, ano pa yun? Sige. Okay na yan. Sige. So, ito ngayon yung ating taxable income. Okay. So, taxable income natin will be Okay. So, paano na yan? Uh, 4,120 minus 1,2 minus 1,6 plus 8 So, 1,4 Okay, sige. So, solve natin ngayon yung mga items natin. Uh, December 31, 20x1, 20x2, etc. Okay, 
So, pansinin mo, take note up, tinatanong 20x1 at saka 20x2. Okay? Kasi nakaka-start nga daw na ang operations malabang nung 20x1. Okay? So, yan yung mga items natin. So, dalawa ang compute, i-compute natin, 20x1 at saka 20x2. Okay? Again, this is, it is also um, important na ginawa natin to para alam natin kung magkano na lang yung madadagdag sa ating deferred taxes. Okay? So, start muna tayo 20x1 kasi given naman ng mga items. So, 20x1 computation tayo. Magkano ang deferred tax asset for 20x1? Alam natin na ang source lang ng deferred tax asset natin is ito lang warranty obligation which is 1120. Okay? Ano yung 1120? Okay? So, ang def uh, deferred tax asset. Okay? Yung warranty obligation. Okay? na 1,120 times anong tax rate? 30%. Okay? Kasi yan yung portion na nakarecognize as expense pero hindi pa talaga siya deductible for tax purposes. Okay? So yan yung beginning item natin. Calculate lang natin. 1,120 times 0.3. So that's 3,36. Okay? So yan yan. Okay? Portion na in-expense natin ng 20x1 pero hindi pa siya Um, in expense for tax purposes kasi siya nga ay uh, hindi pa bayad. Okay? Next, deferred tax liability for 20x1. So, deferred tax liability naman. Ano ang component niyan? Dalawa, di ba? Yan yung sa receivable at saka yung sa building. Receivable at saka yung depreciation. Okay. So yung beginning ng receivable natin, 'di ba? Yun na yung 48. So diretso mo na times 30%. Okay, so that's going to be 4,800,000 times 0.3, that's 1,440. Tapos yung, sorry, depreciation natin Nung last year, di ba, straight line ulit tayo. So, malamang nung last year, double declining. So, 2 million yung difference. Kasi 4 million ang, ang tax depreciation, double declining, tapos 2 million lang sa atin kasi straight line. Okay? Times 30%. Okay? So, that's going to be 600. Okay? So, pag pinagsama, Lagi na lang natin dito. So, parang 2 million 40 lahat yun. Okay. So, yun yung sagot natin for 20x1. Kaya given, sagot 36 ay, number 36 natin, yung deferred tax asset natin is 336. Yan yan. Deferred tax liability, 2 million 40. Okay. Tinatanong, how much is a deferred tax asset as of December 31, 20x2? Ano ba nangyari? Di ba tumaas? Ang source natin ng deferred tax asset is the warranty obligation. Yung warranty obligation natin, from 1,120, naging 1,2. So, ibig sabihin, tumaas pa. Dalawang approach ang pwede mong gawin dyan. It's either, idiretsyo mo ng itong 1,2, multiply mo ng 30%, kasi tumaas naman siya, or ito, plus yung increase. Okay? So, basically, for 20x2, parang ganito ang computation mo. Deferred tax asset, warranty obligation ulit, That's going to be, kunin mo na lang yung total, 1,200,000 times 30%. That's going to be 360. Okay? Or, or, pwedeng ang gawin mo, yung beginning balance na 336,000 plus yung increase niya. Di ba tumaas ng 80 dito? 80,000 times 30%. Same din lang yon 360 din lang yan. Okay? So, kasi ang pag kinuha mo yung, 8, yung 30% ng 80,000, di ba? That's 24. So, 336 plus 24,000, 360 din lang yan. So, pwedeng mag-incremental ka. Pero kasi ang, kaya ako ginawa yung incremental kasi gusto ko rin malaman yung taxable income para makuha natin yung re-recognize natin for tax purposes na current tax expense. So, same din lang. Okay. Tapos ngayon, yung sa ating deferred tax liability, 
Okay? Deferred tax liability, ang pwede natin gawin dyan is we get the total uh, receivable. Ganun din yung ginawa din natin. Okay, so yung receivable natin, di ba naging 6 million na siya? So, 6 million times 30% equals. So, that's going to be 2 million 400,000. Tapos yung depreciation. Okay, magkano yung difference ng depreciation, di ba? 2 million nung last year, tapos ngayon ang difference ay... 1.6. So, magiging 3.6 na siya. Okay. Yun siya. So, actually, pwedeng uh, ang tawag dito. Tama ba? 1.6. Oo. 1.6 na yung total na difference natin. Okay. So, that's going to be wait lang. Building net of accumulated depreciation. This is so, tama kasi straight line nga to. Tama lang. Okay. So, 3.6 na yung total difference. Multiply natin ng 30%. So, that's going to be 3.6 times 0.3. It's going to be 1,080,000. Okay. So, pag tinotal natin, yung total nito, that's going to be Three million. Ay, wait. Tumaas ba yung receivable? Tumaas yung receivable. Okay. So, total lang mo yan natin. Ah. Three million four eighty. Okay. So, pag titignan mo ngayon, bakit, bakit, Pag tinitignan mo, 3 million 480, tapos tinatanong how much the deferred tax liability, hindi naman lumalabas yung 3480. Kasi take note, ang kinawa lang natin, kinuha mo yung receivable na 6 million, hindi mo kinonsider na meron ng na-earn na portion na nakolekta na 3-2. So, kailangan mong tanggalin yung earn portion na 3-2. Subject mo sa, ah, uh, dito, subject mo doon sa ating 30%. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, Parang ganito. Or basically, parang yung 1-2. 1-2 one yung na-realize eh. Okay? The difference. So, basically, ang gagawin mo na lang para hindi ka mahirapan, ganito na lang gawin mo sa deferred tax liability. Yung depreciation, walang problema. Okay? Mag-incremental na lang tayo. Okay? Kasi, pakita lang natin ha. Or, okay, deferred tax liability is going to be like this. Yung increase na Sa receivable, ba yung receivable nag-increase ng from 4.8 naging 6 million, so 1.2. Lang, explain natin mamaya yung total at saka yung incremental approach. So this is going to be 1.2 times 30%, 360. Okay. Pagkatapos yung ating depreciation, depreciation naman ngayon, Difference ulit is yung 1.6, di ba? Times 30%. So that's going to be wait lang. times 0.3. That's 480. Okay. So, total lang tinaas nyan. 480 plus 360. It's going to be 840. Okay. Yan. So, Nung 20x1, ang deferred tax liability natin, 2 million 40. Ha? Tapos, ngayon, ito yung madadagdag. Okay? So, parang magiging 2880 siya. Okay? So, basically, parang ganito. Um, plus, lagay na lang natin dito. 2 million 40. Okay, para lumabas yung 2,880,000. Okay. So, lalabas pa rin yung sagot na tama. Okay. Doon tayo sa total approach ngayon. Okay. Kasi ang kinonsider lang natin dito, yung total receivable at saka yung total depreciation. Okay. Kailangan mong ibawas dito yung portion 
that was already earned out of the total na nakolekta. Okay? So, tignan mo to. Anong difference nung 3480 minus 2880? And 2880. Diba may difference na 600? Divide natin yan ng 0.3. 2 million. Ano yung 2 million na yun? Saan nang galing yung 2 million na yun? Yun yung itanapin natin. Kasi makita dito eh. Kasi may 2 million na difference eh. Saan, na, saan nang galing yung 2 million na yun? Okay. Kasi parang ganito siya. Kung ang increase ay kung ang increase ay 1, 2. Diba? ang increase nitong dalawa, nung 4,800 naging 6 million is 1,200,000. Ang nakolekta ay 3,200,000. So kung 3,200,000 yan, minus yung 1,200,000 na increase, ibig sabihin meron pang nadagdag na liability, 2 million lang yung attributable doon sa na-realize currently. Okay? So ibig sabihin, magbabawas tayo ng 2 million doon. Okay? Kaya, ang labas dyan, minus yung na-earn na 2 million, okay, times 30%. Okay, so parang ang labas ngayon dyan is, for 20x2, ito yung total, pero may attributable na na-realize. Okay, yung na-realize na portion for this year. Okay, so ang lalabas din dyan ay, 2,880,000. Kaya nga mas safe na instead na mag-total approach ka, mag-incremental ka na lang. Ang gawin mo, yung dating balance, dagdag mo yung increase during the period. Okay? Kasi kapag ginawa mo yung total approach, na minumultimultiply mo lang dire-diretso, makakalimut, particularly kapag may na-earn na portion, makakalimutan mong ibawas yung portion that was already earned currently. Okay? So, yun yung magiging problema mo doon. Okay, kaya mas maganda incremental to 880. Yan. Next, how much is the income tax expense for 20x2? Okay, income tax expense is based on 4120, di ba? Okay, so dito na lang tayo. Income tax expense. 4120. Times 30%. So, 1236, letter C. Okay. Tapos yung current tax expense that's going to be equal to magkano na yun na 1,4 times 30%. 4,20 letter D. Yun. Okay. So, yun yung solution natin dyan. So, again, it is more advisable for you to compute for the increases or decreases in different taxes based on the incremental items. Okay? So, ito yung isang tatandaan. Kasi yung nangyari dito, straightforward lang kasi nag-increases, nag-increase naman siya. E paano kung nag-decrease? Ibig sabihin, mas marami kang nakolekta. Example, dito sa receivable, nag-decrease, mas marami kang nakolekta ngayon kaysa doon sa na-earn. So, ang mangyayari dyan, reversal of deferred tax liability ang mangyayari. Okay? Dito naman sa ating sa building wala hindi naman pwedeng mangyari na ano hindi naman pwedeng mangyari na ay hindi magkakaroon siya ng difference later pagdating doon sa mga latter years kasi mas bababa na yung depreciation niya so doon magkakaroon ng reversal dito sa estimated warranty ganun din kapag nagkataon mas marami kang binayaran ay sa doon sa na expense then magkakaroon ng reversal ng deferred tax asset din okay so yun siya So, pag-reversal, edi eh mababawasan instead na madagdagan. Dito kasi plus yung ginawa natin kasi nadagdagan yung, nadagdagan yung deferred tax natin. Okay? Pero, 
Ah, uh, pag nagkabawasan, edi ganoon din minus din kami. Okay, so yan yung answer natin dyan. Next tayo dito. Ano yun? Sir, dun po sa DTL ng 20x to 6 million times 30% po is 18. Ay, wait lang. Saan yun? Ayun nga, no? Saan ko nakuha to? Wait lang. Baka dun pa tayo magka-problema. Wait lang, ha? One, eight. Wait. So, kapag... Ay, tama lang naman. So, kapag one, eight to, plus... Pag tinotal approach natin. Wait lang, ha? One, eight plus... 1080 is 2880. Same lang naman. Saan ko nakuha yung 24? <laughs> tama pala, tama pala. Kasi ang ginawa ko tuloy doon, 24, pinag, nag-compute pa tuloy ako nung na-earn during the period. Kaya tuloy nag, naghanap pa, hinanap ko pa yung na-earn during the period, pinawas ko pa. Parehas lang. Ito na gawin mo. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, anyway, same lang naman yung nangyari doon. So, nagkamali lang ako ng computation. Nag-2-4 ako kasi, anong ginawa ko sa 2-4? Kinuha ko yung anong ginawa ko doon? Kinuha ko pa yung earned during the period. Ah, okay. Sige, wag na. Basta ito na lang gawin mo. Nagkamali yata ako kanina doon sa pag total kinuha ko pa yung earn during the period so mas maganda same lang naman anyway so yan na lang gawin mo okay so for our items this is the computation under total approach ito yung para naman sa incremental okay incremental approach so anyway mag parehas lang naman yung lalabas okay for those items Namali akong pindot kanina. Sige, bayaan mo na. <laughs> Sige. So, yun. Okay. So, again, in your computation, in your computation for the differences here, uh, what you need to do is either to account for it on a total approach or on a an incremental approach. Okay. Ang difference lang ngayon, ang magiging problema mo kapag ikaw ay nagto-total approach, uh, babalikan mo pa yung mga nangyari ng previous years. Okay. So, parang ang labas, Kung nakakompute ka naman na ng balances for 20x1, edi ang gawin mo na lang, hanapin mo na lang yung changes for 20x2 para mas madali yung computation mo. Kasi kapag magto-total approach ka, pababalikan mo pa yung nangyari ng previous years. Tapos, another computation. Although, at least, mas comprehensive yung computation mo. Pero bahala ka na. It's up to you later on kung ano ba ang mas gusto mong computation approach. Is it going to be yung tawag dito, is it going to be total or yung may incremental considering na may balances na nung beginning. Okay, so yun yan. Sige, next tayo. Ano tinatanong dito? Ganun na let income tax, current tax, 20x1, 20x2. So this is uh, situations wherein there will be movement already of your balances. So parang Nangyari ganito. Nung 20x1, carrying amount is 480, tax base is 400, so the difference is 80. Okay? Nung 20x2, carrying amount is 400, tax base is 360, the difference is now 40. So ibig sabihin may reversal, may reversal tayo ng difference. So since in this case, mas mataas ang carrying amount ng asset kaysa sa tax base, malamang this is a Deferred tax liability na nag-reverse. Ito naman sa liability, mas mataas ang carrying amount. So, itong 60,000 is a source of deferred tax asset na malabang nag-reverse. So, ganun yung mangyari dyan. Okay. So, as a result, ang ginagawa, ang pinapagawa sa atin, tinatanong kung magkano ang current at saka income tax return. So, sabi dito, pre-tax income were 1,6 and 2 million 
for 20x2 and 20x1 respectively. So, start muna tayo 20x1. Okay, para mas madali. 20x1 tayo. Ito yung ating uh, pre-tax income. Okay, pre-tax income natin is 2 million. Okay, next. Kung may pre-tax income tayo dito, ano tong 80,000 na to? This is a taxable temporary difference. So, taxable temporary difference which is going to be deducted, 80,000. Pagkatapos, deductible temporary difference na 60,000. Add back siya. Kasi galing tayong pre-tax income eh. So, yung ating taxable income is going to be 2 million minus 80 is uh, 1 million 920. So, magiging 9, 1 million 980, no? Tama ba? Double check. 2 million minus 80,000 plus 60,000. Ay! Minus sabi. Ang gulo. 2 million minus 80,000 plus 60,000. Tama? 1980. Okay. So at least pang pang sure lang. Okay. So ngayon, ano tax rate daw? 30%. Okay, so how much is the income tax expense? So, multiply na lang natin. Kasi parehas naman yung tax rate eh. 30%. So, 2 million times 30% is 600,000. Taxable temporary difference times 30% equals uh, ilan to? 24. Tama no? 24. Tapos ito, times 30%, is going to be 18. Tapos yung taxable income natin, 1980 times 30%. Double check lang natin. 6.3, that's 594. So tama lang, letter D. Okay, 20x2. Ano ang mangyari dyan? So, ganun din lang. Pre-tax income. Kapihin na lang natin to. Okay. Pero, ito, reversal. Reversal of. Yan. So, magbabaliktad yung operation. Ito, reversal din to. Of. Okay. Ang reversal ng TTD natin, 40,000. So, magiging plus 40 to. forty. Tapos, itong reversal of deductible temporary difference from 60 to 28. 32, no? 32. So, minus 32. Yan. Para makuha natin yung effect. Okay. So, ito nito, 1,600,000. Okay. So, from there, kung 1,600,000 yun, okay, tas i-add back mo yung 40,000, bawas natin yung 32,000, 1,608. So, 1,608 to. Yan. Tapos times 30%, so mag-iiba yung mga amount dito. Okay. So, current tax expense for 20x2 will be ito, 1.6 times 30%. Times 30%, that's 480. Reversal natin, uh, 40,000 times 30%, that's 12,000. Bawas din, ay dagdag din kasi nandun. So, dapat ito nilagyan ko pala ng ganito para mas madaling masolve. Yan. 
Si to 32,000 times 0.3, that's 96 bawas. Kasi reversal na siya ng asset. So ito, 1608 times 0.3, that's 480 to 400, letter D. Okay, so yan yung answer niyan. So ganun din, kapag ginawa mo yung solution pa ganito, dapat makukuha mo din yung same, same amount. Okay, so yan yung answer natin sa um, 42 hanggang 45. So yun siya. So dito, ang concept natin is the reversal of your de de temporary differences. Okay, 46 tayo. On January 1, 20X1, nag-issue ka ng convertible bond with face amount of 4 million for 4.8. The bond matures in 7 years and can be converted into ordinary shares at any time. At the time of issuance, the bonds are selling at 110 without the conversion feature. Income tax rate is 30%. How much is the deferred tax liability arising from the issuance of the compound financial instrument? Okay. Sige. So, first, computein natin yung... So, ito yung total. Total is 4,800,000. Yung liability component... Okay, 110 without the conversion option. So, that's going to be 4 million. Uh, wait lang ah, double check lang. 4 million times 1.1. 4-4. Sige, 4-4. Equity component is 400. Okay, so... Basically, kung ito yung totoong utang, 400,000 yung relating sa ating equity. So, ito yung excess, okay? Times 30%. That's going to be, tama ba? 120. 120. Okay, so, letter C ang sagot. Okay? So, the amount of The deferred tax liability is the deferred tax liability arising from the equity component of the um dito equity component of the compound financial instrument. Okay, kasi parang ang labas diyan, kung ito yung total consideration, liability component should be recognized at fair value. Then the the equity component, okay, will be subjected to deferred tax liability. Okay, tas later on magre-reverse siya kapag na-realize or nagamit na yung Um, conversion or kapag nag-expire pero hindi pa rin nagamit. Okay, so yun yung sagot dyan. Next, Leeway Tolerance Company as the following information. Anong tinatanong? Deferred tax asset. Sige. Um, sabi, eh, sige, basahin mo na natin. Yung DTD natin, 4 million There are no temporary differences of the beginning of the year. Pre-tax income in 20X1 is 5,200,000 and on which income tax of 1,560 was recognized. Income tax rate is 30%. Wait, double check lang natin kung tama ba yun. 5,2 times 0.3. 1,560. So tama lang. Taxable income was 9,2. Double check lang natin na kasi kailangan natin masiguro na Tama yung items. Okay. 2,760. So, tama lang. Okay. So, leeway is the result of operation have been declining and this has raised doubts on whether deferred tax asset will be realized in the future. Leeway then reassess its deferred tax asset and concluded that it is more likely than not that only half of the deferred tax asset will be realized in the future. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan nating mag-adjust nung item natin. Okay, so pansin mo, parang ganito yung computation niya na. Wait, lagay natin yung computation. Okay, so it's like this. Current tax expense during the period is 2,760. Okay. Deferred tax asset. Okay, slash this is your deferred tax benefit. 
is equal to 4 million times 30%, di ba? Kaya kung mapapansin mo, wait lang, i-compute lang natin. 4 million times 30% is 1, 2. 1, 2. Kaya yung ating cur ay sorry income tax expense is 1560. Okay, yan yung computation niya, original. This is the original. Okay, so yan yun. Ang sinabi dahil daw may may discrepancies or may doubt as to whether magagamit mo pa ulit magagamit mo ng buo yung deferred tax benefit half na lang daw so ipig sabihin kung half yon ito yung magiging bagong computation yung adjusted okay will now be 2760 ito magiging 600 so kung 600 na lang yan ito magiging 2160. Okay? Kasi mag-iiba yung amount ng deferred tax benefit. So, how much is the adjusted deferred tax asset that's going to be 600 na lang, letter B. How much is the adjusted income tax expense from 1560 magiging 2160 na lang siya? Ay magiging 2160. Ibig sabihin tataas. So, letter C. How much is the adjusted deferred tax expense or benefit? So, from the original na 12 magiging 600 na rin lang siya. So, magiging may parenthesis, syempre, kasi benefit. So, 600 na lang. Tapos, how much is the adjusted current tax expense? Hindi na-adjust yan. Kasi ang current tax expense is based on the currently payable items. Okay? So, hindi siya mag adjust kahit magalaw pa yung deferred tax asset natin. Kaya ang sagot dyan ay letter A pa rin. Okay, so yan yan. Next tayo. 51. Okay, so ano to? What are the deferred tax liability and deferred tax asset respectively considering all of these items? Okay, sige. So, kailangan nating mag-compute yung mga items na given. Sige. So, information on cultish and discipline companies um, operations during 20X or during the year is shown below. So, revenues um na ang na-recognize daw natin ay 4 million pagkatapos ang taxable is 3 Okay, so isa-isa na lang natin. Doon doon tayo sa revenue. Yan. Kasi yung gagawin mo lang naman i-identify mo muna kung siya pa ay taxable temporary difference or deductible temporary difference. Okay. So revenue muna tayo uh, which is a taxable temporary difference. That's going to be 800,000. Next, retirement benefit costs are deducted for financial reporting as services are rendered by employees but are tax deductible only when actually paid to retiring employees. Current service costs recognized during the year is 400 while benefits paid to retiring employees amounted to 600,000. Okay, so what's the problem here? nag-deduct na siya ng 600 sa atin, 400 pa lang yung dineduct. So, there is a deductible temporary difference of 600,000. So, this is the retirement benefit. Okay. So, this is a um, deduct. Ay, wait. Um, Current service cost, 400 lang binawas natin. Pero for tax purposes, binawas yung 600. So this is a deductible temporary difference. Ay, hindi ah. Wait, wait, wait. Kasi um, pag ganyan ang mangyari, 400 ang binawas for tax purposes. Pero financial income will be greater than taxable income. So, this is still a taxable temporary difference. Kasi ang magiging basis natin dyan, dalawa eh. Unang basis natin is kung anong effect niya sa income. Effect niya sa income, kung 400 lang binawas natin, 600 binawas for tax purposes, mas mataas ang accounting income. 
So if accounting income is greater than taxable income, that is a deferred tax liability. Okay? So TTD yun. Ngayon, another is, if we are going to consider the uh, the tax base and the carrying value, the tax base of the asset or of the liability is greater than the tax than the carrying value of the liability. So TTD pa rin siya. This is 200,000. Okay, next. Research costs amounting to 360 are expensed immediately during the financial reporting period. For tax purposes, research costs are amortize over 3 years amortization of the research cost uh, deduction for tax purposes is 120 so there is a future deductible amount uh, 240 yun different so this is the research cost okay this is a deductible temporary difference okay bakit siya deductible temporary difference kasi na deduct na natin sa atin pero sa future pa i deduct ni uh, tax authorities 240 Okay, next. Unrealized loss for it also recognized during the year in profit or loss on an investment held for trading securities. No equivalent adjustment was made for tax purposes. Any gain or loss on actual disposal of securities is taxable or tax deductible. Okay. okay, so this is a deductible temporary difference. Kasi Unrealized loss siya, nirecognize na natin, pero hindi pa. So, it is going to be deducted only when actually uh, disposed. So, this is going to be uh, ano to? unrealized loss. This is a deductible temporary difference. Okay, na 40,000. Tapos, payments during the year of fines, surcharges, and penalties arising from violation of law amounting to so, next po na tayo sa payments for payments during the year of fines, surcharges, and penalties arising from violation of law amounting amounted to 160,000. So, these are not, taga lang, hindi kasi siya i-consider as a temporary difference. Kasi ang labas dyan, binawas mo siya for accounting purposes pero hindi naman siya pwedeng maging deductible for tax purposes. Okay. Tapos, uh, Coltis reported pre-tax income of 400,000 income tax rate is 30%. Any operating loss can be carried over to the next period. Coltis expects to realize the economic benefit of any operating loss carry forward. Okay. Meron ba tayong in-expect na carry forward? Kung pre-tax accounting income is 400. Sige. I-double check natin. Kasi 400,000 yung pre-tax accounting income, di ba? So, baka meron tayong null ko dito. Kasi sinabi eh. So, malamang expect natin baka may null ko dito. Okay, check na. Kasi kung may null ko, this is a deductible temporary difference. So, try natin. Okay. So, let us go to pre-tax accounting income, 400,000. Okay. Pagkatapos, ibawas natin yung or i-add back natin yung 160. Okay? Pagkatapos, check natin yung ibang mga items na na-recognize natin for accounting purposes, pero hindi pa for tax purposes. Or basically, babalik tayo papuntang income tax. So again, uh, revenues recognized for financial reporting is uh, 4 million, tas 3, 2, diba? So ibig sabihin, sobra yung accounting income ng 800, so minus 800,000 dito. Okay. Tapos, retirement benefit, kulang pa tayo ng 200. So, minus 200 pa dito. Sorry, pwede mo nang tignan yung nandito na lang. Research cost, uh, 120 lang yung dinedak for tax purpose. So, sobra tayong 240. Add back natin yung 240. Okay. Tapos, unrealized loss, recognize, nag-recognize na tayo ng 40. So, future pa. So, plus 40 ulit to. 160. 160. Okay. So, ngayon, from there, compute natin yung TTD, multiply natin ng tax rate na 30%. Pag walang lumabas, ibig sabihin, um, 
may mali tayo dun sa considerations. Okay? So anyway, itotal natin tong dalawang to. That's 1 million. Times tax rate is 30%. That's going to be 300,000. So lumabas naman yung sagot natin for liability. So double check na lang natin itong all ko itong apat uh, uh, itong tatlong to kung total niya is tatama tayo ng DTA kung hindi yung 160 consider natin so 240 240 plus 40 plus 160 that's 440 times 30% pag walang lumabas edi consider natin yung penalties 132. Okay, 132. So, lumabas naman. So, tama tayo. Kasi, um, ang consideration lang naman natin dito sa problem na to is, alam natin na yung 160 ay hindi naman talaga deductible for tax purposes. Kasi that is fine surcharges and penalties for violation of law. We, the, tax, the tax authorities will not recognize or will not allow you to deduct a portion of your, or to deduct the expenses incurred from your violation. So, this is a permanent difference. Pwedeng ibabawas mo to for accounting purposes, pero hindi. For tax purposes. Pero, um, again, di kasi natin sure kung saan nakuha yung problem. Pero if you're going to adapt it in Philippine CPA, hindi talaga siya ibabawas. So, pag nagkataon, hindi lumabas yung sagot natin dito, then, uh, saka natin i-consider yung 160. Okay? Paano lalabas yung 184? Yung 84. Wait lang ha. Check lang natin. 84... Divided by 0.3. Okay. Divided by. Divided by 0.3. 280. Wala pa rin. Hindi pa rin lalabas yung item. Ay pwede kapag 440 minus 160. Oo nga. Pero weird naman yun. Hindi talaga pwede. Kasi minsan kapag nag-aalangan ka, Kasi kung sure ka na sa deferred tax liability, mag-aalangan ka na lang dito sa asset eh. Pag binawas mo yung 160 sa 440, lalabas yung 84 na deferred tax asset kapag multiply mo sa 30%. Pero hindi naman siya uh, reasonable na ganun ang gawin mo. Okay, so talagang at least convince ka na tama nga yung sagot. Okay. Okay, so we go to the last items of our uh, income taxes items. So let's start with number 52. So the company purchased goods with selling price of 2 million from an 80% of subsidiary. The cost of goods uh, to the subsidiary is 1 million 200,000. And the company and its subsidiary operates in different tax jurisdictions but have similar tax rates of 30%. The entire inventory is held at year end. So in other words, wala pang nabenta to unrelated parties. Then, natanong how much is a deferred tax asset. Okay? So, I deferred tax tam asset. Kasi this is pertaining to item that will be deductible in the future. On the point of view of the uh, entity who purchased it. Or on the point of view ng ating um, sino na yun? Yung parent. Okay? So, basically, the solution will be as follows. So first, alamin muna natin yung sales, no? Okay, so the sales is 2 million. In that case, this is the purchase of the... Uh, sorry, to, purchase of the slash. Okay, lagot na lang slash. Sales last purchase of the parent from subsidiary. Tapos next is cost of sales. Ito yung cost of subsidiary. Okay. This is 1,200,000. So this is the gross profit. Okay. Gross profit. Also known as the unrealized. GP. Okay, sa point of view nung ating um, uh, entity, 
kapag nag- nagkaroon ng consolidation, that's going to be 800,000. Okay. So, since the since the purchase or since the items that were purchased from the subsidiary is not yet um, sold to outside parties, then the problem there is hindi pa talaga siya uh, pwede i-consider as an item of uh, sale on the other part or on the subsidiary tapos hindi pa siya pwede i-consider as an actual ano ba yun? Uh, hindi pa siya talaga purchase. Okay? Kasi pag pinag-combine mo yan, parang ang labas is parang nag-transfer ka lang ng goods from one entity to another. So, ang issue lang naman natin dyan is um, nirecognize kasi ni parent yung purchase at an amount in excess of the original cost which is 800,000. Uh, and take note ha, kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay subsidiary, the elimination involves elimination of the entire amount. Hindi natin kinoconsider yung ating percentage kasi baka ang gawin mo 800,000 times 80%. Okay? Kasi take note, uh, eventually, pag nag-consolidate yan, they are considered to be one entity kasi may control na nga tayo. So, gagawin mo na lang dyan, yung unrealized gross profit natin, multiply natin ng 30%. Okay? Tapos lalabas dito yung deferred tax asset. Okay? Again, bakit siya deferred tax asset? Because the, this amount cannot yet be deducted as part of the uh, cost of sales or as part of the purchases of the other entity kasi this is from interrelated uh, parties okay so the deferred tax asset here uh, pag lumabas tayo ng calcu that's going to be 800,000 times 0.3 that's 240,000 so the answer is letter C okay so yun ang sagot natin sa 52 53 tayo. <clears throat> okay. So, Prentice Corporation uses the equity method to account for its 25% investment in Learner Incorporated. During the year, Learner reported profits of 4 million and declared dividends of 800,000. Okay. Additional information is shown below. So, first, Prentis does not control the dividend policy of learner. It is probable that all undistributed earnings of learner will be distributed in the future in the future in, or in future periods. Next, uh, in the jurisdiction where Prentis operates, dividends received are eligible for 80% deductions. There are no other temporary differences. And Income tax rate during the year is 30%. Income tax rate in subsequent years based on substantially enacted tax loss by year end is 35%. Anong? How much is the deferred tax liability as of year end? Okay, sige. So, ang concern lang natin dito is um for purposes of uh, for purposes of accounting kino consider na kasi natin as income yung earned portion okay however for purposes of ato ito for purposes of taxation ang kino consider lang na earnings is yung na declare na portion okay so basically uh this will be our computation Or wait. Okay, sige. So first, i-compute muna natin yung uh, investment income. Okay, so the investment income in this case is 4 million times 25%. Okay, and this is equal to, malamang, 1 million yan. Yung dividend received. Then, 
That's 800,000 times 25%. So this is also for I sorry, 200,000. Next, um, ano yung mga information na sinabi? Uh, apprentice does not control dividend policy. And in the jurisdiction where apprentice operates, dividends received are eligible for 80% deduction. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, kapag eventually na-declare yan, it's going to be eligible for uh, 80% deduction. So, ibig sabihin, uh, or well, it's 800 times 0.2 na lang yung may iwan, no? Yun. Okay. So, basically, parang ganito. Um, magkano yung temporary difference? Okay. So, yung temporary difference natin, therefore, is equal to yung difference nitong 1 million at saka yung 200 which is 800,000. Kasi 800,000 yung sa point of view natin, nirecognize na natin siya as income. Pero for tax purposes, ang nirecognize lang is yung 200,000. Okay? So therefore, 800,000 yung temporary difference. However, this is yung tax, ah sorry, <clears throat> Bayan, tax deductible portion okay, is 80%. Okay, so that's going to be 800,000 times 80%. Okay, so the tax, tax deductible portion is 640, no? Aba, double check lang natin. 800,000 times 0.8. Tama, 640. Okay, so the effective temporary difference is actually 800 minus 640. So, that's 160. Okay. Tapos, multiply natin ng effective tax rate which is 35%. Kasi sabi dun sa problem, 35% na siya by the, by the next years na. In next year pa naman natin marirealize yung um, different tax portion na yan. Okay. So, what we are going to do is we multiply it by 35% kasi yun na yung tax rate effective during that date. So, this is now our deferred tax liability. Okay? So, in other words, it is going to be taxable in the future. So, 160 times 35 times 0.35 is 56,000. So, ang sagot dyan sa problem na yan ay yung 56,000 letter D. Okay, so, ganun lang yan. So, take note in this case, dahil uh, investment in associate tayo, syempre using equity method, ang i-recognize lang natin, yung portion lang that is attributable to us. Hindi naman natin pwedeng angkinin yung lahat-lahat kasi wala naman tayong control over the entity. Okay, so, similarly, uh, ang focus lang natin dyan is for us to be able to account for the components that is attributable to us, which is 25%. Okay, 54 tayo. Uh, on January 1, the company acquired 25% interest in another entity. During the year, the uh, associate, associate to kasi 25%, eh. associate reports profits of 4 million and declared and paid dividends of 800. The tax income is 1,400,000 sa point of view ni Hack. Okay. The only temporary difference arises from Hack's investment in associate. Under the jurisdiction where Hack operates, dividends uh, received are eligible for 80% dividend uh, received deduction. Income tax rate is 30%. How much is the current tax expense for the year? Okay. So, Basically, ang gagawin lang naman natin dyan is kunin natin yung accounting or pre-tax accounting income. Okay. Uh, Pwede tong kalahin kulay. So, the pre-tax accounting income according to the problem is 1,400,000. Okay. 
Okay. Next natin is, consider natin kung ano yung effect nung ating, um, this is a taxable temporary difference. Okay. Ano yung temporary difference natin? Actually, kakopihin mo lang yung nandito. Okay? Yung ating temporary difference. Kasi, kung kung susundan natin yung information, di ba, ang narecognize natin is 4 million times 25%, that's 1 million ulit. Lagay lang natin, kasi related naman yan. Pagkatapos, bawas natin yung, kung nagbayad na ng dividend na 800, then that's going to uh, result to 200,000 deduction here. Okay? So effectively, may 800,000 pa dito. Pero tatanggalin natin yung and yung non-taxable portion na 640. Yun din yung 80% kanina doon sa problem sa taas. So effectively ang ating um, temporary difference ay ah uh, sana yan 160. Okay. So if we are going to look for the Uh, taxable income, no? Okay? So, parang i pwede mo namang simplihan yung mas masim masimpleng computation kung ayaw mo yung ganyan. Pakita lang muna natin, na Dito. Ang gagawin mo lang is 1,4 dito. Tapos, ibawas natin yung 1 million. Tapos, idagdag mo yung um, 200. Ay, sorry. 200 siya, pero tatanggalin mo rin yung 80% nun eh. Wait lang. So, compute lang natin. 200,000 times 0.2 na lang para yun yung may 1. 40,000. 40,000. Okay. So, tapos, ang lalabas dyan ay, mamaya natin i-reconcile yung nandito ah. So, 1,400,000 minus natin yung 1,000,000. Tapos, dagdag natin yung 40,000. Kasi multiply natin ng anong tax rate daw dito? 30%. 132. Okay. So, parang ang lalabas 440 to. Tapos, uh, times tax rate na 35%. Ay, 30%. Sorry. So, ito yung ating current tax expense. Okay. So, yan siya. So, ang mangyayari dito is 132,000. So, yan yung shortcut natin dyan. Okay. Mas mabilis na pag yan na lang yung gagawin natin. Okay. So, in this case kasi, uh, kapag gusto mong makuha yung, yung ganun na answer, Same din lang. Kasi ang mangyari dyan is basically, if this is the amount that was already uh, recognized, okay, natanggalin din lang natin siya. Pero ang ginagawa kasi natin, i-reconcile natin, why is it that in this problem, yung nasa taas, 56,000 lang yung deferred tax liability. Okay? Uh, ano ba yung temporary difference dito? Okay? So, pag gano'n ang ginawa mo kasi dito, di ba, syempre, nasolve mo na itong nasa 53, so ang expected mo, ganito din yung mangyayari, di ba? So, pag nag-compute ka, parang ang gagawin mo, magbabawas ka lang dito ng parang 160, okay? Kasi baka magkamali ka dito eh. Pakita lang natin ha. So, kapag binawas natin yung 160 sa 1,400,000 minus 160, so, magiging 1,240 ito. Wait, dito pala. Sorry. 1, 2, Pag binultiply mo yan ng 30%, ang lalabas dyan ay 1, 2, times 0.3. 3, hindi lumabas sa ano. Hindi siya lumabas sa problem. Okay? Yan. Pero possible kasi na yan yung gawing answer dyan. Pero, this is actually incorrect kasi take note that the 56,000 deferred tax liability here is not solely based on a single computation, but it involves a tax-deductible portion. Okay? Kaya kung magsosolve ka, okay, kasi baka ang gawin mo, kopyahin mo yung nandito, 
pag ganyan ang ginawa mo, it's going to be an incorrect assumption because ang in mo dito is you are only considering the net deduction. Take note, net deduction. Hindi dapat yung net deduction. Dapat yung gross deduction to the entire pre-tax accounting income. Okay? Kaya ang gagawin mo dyan is i-carry forward mo tong 1 million na to. Tapos, yung 200,000, itong 1 million, ito yung i-deduct mo ngayon. Okay? Tapos, yung 200,000, kasi ito na yung actual, di ba? Ito yung actual na na, ito yung actual na na earn for tax purposes. Okay? Ito yung i-carry mo dito na i-add back mo. Okay? Add back mo siya. Parang ito rin siya, parang yung 40,000. Pero, i-consider mo yung net na deduction or yung pwede mo i-deduct which is 160,000. Saan mo na ulit nakuha yung 160,000? Yan yung 200,000. Sorry. 200,000 times 40, 30%. Okay. Yung, this is the tax deductible portion. Okay. So, pag lang ang ginawa mo dito, kung ano yung ginawa mong shortcut na computation dito, yun din lang yung ginawa mo dito. Parang ang habol mo lang is mahanap mo yung effective na tataksan ng tax authorities okay, based on the taxable income that you will compute. So, ito yung taxable income natin. Okay? So, lalabas din, 440 din lang yan. Okay? So, yun siya. So, pwede shortcut, ganito na lang gawin mo. Okay? Or, pwede gantuhin mo pa para at least alam mo kung ano yung mga tatanggalin natin. So, the taxable temporary difference, okay, lagyan natin ng label tong mga to. So, this is the investment income sa point of view ng ating uh, associate, ay sorry, ng investor. This is our dividend received. Okay, ito yung actual income for tax purposes. Ito yung deductible portion. So, ito na yung taxable income. Tapos, multiply mo na lang ng tax rate ulit na 30%. Then, that's going to be your current tax expense. Okay. So, same din lang. Ang 30%. So, it's up to you kung kaya mo nang i-shortcut naman. Okay. So, ganun na lang ang gawin mo. Okay. Basta yung importante, maintindihan mo yung reason kung bakit dinadagdag, bakit binabawas yung item natin dyan. Okay? So, yun tayo. Yun yung answer sa 54. Oops. 55. Okay. So, for number 55, tinatanong sa atin yung income tax expense or basically this is the total tax expense. Tignan natin kung ano yung mga information na binigay sa atin. So, in relation to our income tax, ang binigay is provision for probable loss na no, 4,800,000 recognized for financial reporting pero it is deductible only when actually paid. Okay, so the company expects to pay the accrued loss in 20x2. Next is, revenue for financial reporting, recognized based on percentage of completion, while revenue for taxation purposes is recognized based on collections on progress billings. Total revenue recognized for financial reporting is 16, revenue recognized for taxation is 12. Pre-tax income for the year is 16 uh, million, tapos income tax rate for 20x1 is 30%. However, the an an enacted tax law that will uh, take effect starting 20x2 January is 32%. Wala nang other temporary difference. Okay. So again, let us reiterate, no? Hindi porkit nakita mo yung 16,000 dito na pre-tax income. Eh, didiretso yung multiply mo na siya ng 30% para makuha mo yung income tax expense. Okay? Try natin, pag ginawa natin yun, hindi natin kung may lalabas na sagot. So, labas na yung calcul. Kapag kinuha mo yung 16 million, multiply mo ng 0.3, lalabas yung 4.8, buti wala sa choice. Okay? Kasi pwedeng isa yun sa sagot na hanapin mo. 
'di ba sabi ko nung diniskas natin yan initially saka mo lang pwedeng gawin yung computation na yon na kukunin mo yung pre-tax income multiply mo agad nung tax rate kung pare-parehas ang tax rate nung current tax expense at saka nung deferred na taxes kasi e sinabi nga nung problem 32% na yung ma-apply for the deferred taxes kaya hindi pwede yon okay so pwede rin baka ang gawin mo naman 16 million pero syempre wala mang hindi mo na to maiisip na try lang natin si Uh, 16 million times 0.32, 5,120. So, lalabas yung letter B. So, baka inisip mo, baka ito na yung sagot. Ganyan. Okay, so, hindi pa rin yun. Mas lalong hindi pwede yung letter B. Kasi ang treatment natin is ganito. Kailangan mo munang kunin yung current tax expense. Okay. Pero, syempre, hindi pa natin makukuha yung current tax expense kasi hindi pa natin alam yung taxable income. Tapos saka natin kukunin yung mga ibang items such as the deferred tax liability tsaka deferred tax asset. Okay. So para masolve natin yung mga yan, ano yung mga first step natin? So kukunin ulit natin si pre-tax accounting income. Wait, palitan lang natin yung kulay. Okay. So our pre-tax accounting income is 16 million. Okay. So, dalawa lang yung binigay dyan. First is yung provision for loss. Okay, so probable loss. Okay, yung probable loss daw na yan ay dinedact na natin for accounting purposes. Pero, it is only deductible when actually paid. So, therefore, this is a, sorry, this is a deductible temporary difference. Okay. So, kung deductible temporary difference yan, i-add back muna natin yung 4,800,000. Okay. Tapos, ito yung sa uh, revenue. This is a taxable temporary difference. Okay. Magkano yung taxable temporary difference? Yung portion na inirecognize natin na hindi pa dapat. ba diba? Sabi nga natin dun, total revenue daw ay 16, pero revenue recognized for tax purposes is 12.8. Okay. So, ibig sabihin may sobra tayong uh, 16 million minus 12.8. We have 3,200,000. So, dapat dito 3,200,000. Ano gagawin doon? Bawas mo muna. And actually, medyo weird yung problem, no? Kasi kung titignan mo, bakit na pre-tax is 16 tapos 16 din yung revenue doon? Eh, sabi may loss, di ba? So, parang ano nangyari yun? Eh, hindi naman nag-reconcile na. So, sundan mo lang yung problem. Huwag mo nga awayin. Okay? So, yan siya. So, from here, lalabas na yung ating taxable income. Okay? So, taxable income natin now will be that's going to be 16 million. Okay? Plus your 48 tapos bawasan natin ng 32. So that's 17,600. Okay. So ngayon, kung gusto mong makuha yung current tax expense, that's going to be 17,600 times 30%. Kasi yun naman yung tax rate na effective. So 17,600 times 0.3, that's 5,280. 5280. Okay, deferred tax liability. Ang source ng deferred tax liability mo itong taxable temporary difference, di ba? Yung 32. Okay, 32 times 32%. Okay, so that's going to be 2,200,000 times 0.32. That's 1,024. Okay. Tapos yung sorry, deferred tax asset naman natin is going to be taken from the 4,800,000 times 32%. So the answer here will be 48 times 0.32. That's 1,536. Okay. 
So, this will now be our total income tax expense. Okay. So, calculate lang natin yan. 5,280. Uh, take note plus ito, minus to. Alagyan na nga lang natin ng parenthesis para yan. So, that's 5,280 plus 1,024 minus 1,536. Okay, so, the answer is 4768, letter A. Yan. Okay. So, yan na yung sagot natin sa 55. Yan. So, ito, kala lang makuha natin yung current tax expense at saka yung deferred tax components para makuha natin yung total. Okay. Yan. Next tayo. Okay, so next information, the company follows a fiscal year that ends on June 30. On January 1, there has been a change in the tax rate in the jurisdiction where the company operates. The tax rate prior to January 1 was 30%, while the newly enacted tax rate that will apply from January 1, 20x1 onwards is 35%. Washi reported pre-tax profit of 1284 the fiscal year ended June 30, 20x1. The only temporary difference pertains to a 16,000 one-year fire insurance premium taken by WASHI on its building on January 1, 20x1. The premium paid is tax deductible in full upon payment. Okay? There were no temporary differences as of July 1, 20x0. And there were... Uh, also, no payments for income tax during the year. Okay, sige. So, let us consider kung ano yung mga items natin dyan. Okay. So, ano yung mga tinatanong sa atin? We have the deferred tax liability as of June 30, 20x1. Magkano yung uh, current tax liability? As of June 30, 20x1. And then, magkano yung income tax expense for the fiscal year and then June 30, 20x1. So, basically, ang gagawin mo lang naman dyan, pag nakuha mo tong sagot na, na, na ito, pag adin mo lang yung dalawa, yun na yung sagot. Okay? Kasi para makuha mo yung sa 58, which is the total tax expense. Okay. So, let us compute for the uh, current tax liability muna or the current tax expense. Okay. So if that is a kung meron tayong pre-tax profit na 1280, okay? This is as of June 30, 20x1, okay? So ibig sabihin nag-start ito ng July 1, 20x0 hanggang June 30, 20x1. So one year 'yun. Okay? So, paano may kukompute ngayon yan? So, ganito siya. Yung 1,280 pre-tax accounting income is 1,280. Okay, wait. Palitan lang natin yung kulay. Okay. Between the pre-tax accounting income and the taxable income, the only difference is the 16,000. Okay? Malamang, since January mo siya binili, kalahati pa lang nito ang na tawag dito? Kalahati pa lang nito ang na accrue mo as expense. Diba? Or yung accrue, na-recognize mo as expense. Pero for purposes of taxation, dapat daw yung entire amount is going to be deductible already. So, ibig sabihin, yung ating taxable temporary difference dito is equal to the 8,000 okay, 8,000 na pre-tax okay, item natin. Okay. So, ano ngayon ang gagawin natin dyan. Doon sa pre-tax income, magbawas pa tayo. Okay? Magbawas pa tayo ng additional item na 8,000. 
So, lalabas na dito ngayon yung taxable income. Okay. So, taxable income natin is 1, 2, 7, 2. Tapos, multiply natin ng tax rate. Na ano ang tax rate natin? Ayun ang problema kasi may portion tayo na 30% tapos may portion na 35%. So, ahatiin natin yan. Okay. So, ahatiin natin yan. Bago natin ilagay yung tax rate. Okay, so that's going to be yung first half will be 1272 times I divide by 2 na lang. So, 363 or 636 I mean. Okay, pagkatapos yung second half, ganun din. 636 din. Okay. Tapos multiply natin to ng yung una, 30%. Tapos yung pangalawa, 35%. Okay. So, 636 times 0.3. That's 19,800. Tapos yung isa, 636. Times point, 35. Two, 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 six hundred. Okay. So, total. That's going to be ko na lang yung 19800 dito. Ay sorry, mali. 22600 plus 19800. That's 413400. 413400. Okay, so yan na yung answer natin na current tax liability. Okay? So lagyan natin ng bold. Ay sorry, bold na pala yan. Ito yung bold. Okay. So, yan yung sagot natin na current tax liability. Okay? We now go to the uh, deferred. Okay, isa lang naman yung ano mo eh, yung 8 million, yung 8,000 lang naman, di ba? So, yung TTD natin na 8,000 multiply lang natin ng 35% kasi yun na yung effective Times 35%. So that's going to be 8,000 times 0.35. That's 2,8. 2,8. Okay. Pagkatapos, yung ilinya na lang natin dito. Wait. Deferred tax liability is equal to. Ayan, ganyan na lang. Tapos ilagay natin dito. Okay, tapos yung total tax expense or income tax expense will be equal to yung pagsamahin mo na lang tong dalawang to. So yun 28 dagdagan mo nung 413 400. So that's 416 208. Okay. So What are the possible errors na ma-encounter natin dito? Pero for, hindi naman siguro siya lalabas. Pero depende kasi kung gaano ka-detailed yung gawin ng examiner for the, exa the questions. No? So ang mangyari dyan is, baka ang gawin mo kasi yung 8,000 instead na ibawas mo siya doon sa total at 1 to 80, baka ang gawin mo yung 8,000, i-attribute mo siya doon sa second half lang. So, parang ang mangyayari, mas mababa yung second half income mo kasi sinabi doon sa problem the tawag dito, the insurance is 
recognized as deductible upon full payment. So baka ang sabihin mo, so ibig sabihin, considered rin as a deduction in the second quarter, in a second half of the year. The answer is no, kasi if we're talking about the, the entire year, si spread over mo pa rin naman yung expense na yan as an expense attributable for the entire year. Kaya wag mong gagawin na yung 1 to 80, di-divide mo ng 2, tas doon mo ibabawas yung buong uh, 8,000 sa second half. Diba? So parang kung gagawin natin yun, 1 to 80, divide natin ng 2. So parang 640, 640 sa first half, tapos sa second half, magiging 6, Uh, 632. Kasi doon may recognize yung buong 8,000. Mali yun. Okay? Kasi maling assumption kapag i-assume mo na i-recognize mo lang yung expense na yun from the time lang na nabayaran. Take note mo si spread pa rin yan over the entire taxable year. Okay. So yan yung item natin dyan. Sige. 59 tayo. Um, so the company does not have any temporary difference on January 1, 20x1. However, during the year, you identified that temporary difference may result from a warrant expense of 480 that was recognized for financial reporting in 20x1. Pero for tax purposes, it is only tax deductible when paid. Warranty cost paid during the year was 200,000. It is expected that the remaining accrued warranty cost will be paid as follows, 160 for 20x2 and 120 for 20x3. Income tax rate for 20x1 is 30%, tapos mapapalitan niyang tax rate na 32 for 20x3, sorry, for 20x2, 32%, and for 20x3, 35. 20x3 onwards, 35%. Magkano ang deferred tax asset as of December 31, 20x1? Okay, so... Let us compute deferred tax asset. So basically, ang gagawin mo lang naman dyan, mag-focus na lang tayo dun sa amount na um, ma-recognize for 20x2 o 20x3. Diba? So 20x2 is going to be 160. Tapos 20x3 is going to be 120. Okay. Tapos, Multiply mo ito ng effective tax rate na 32%. Tapos ito, this is 35%. Okay, so 160 times 32. 160,000 times 0.32, that's 51,200. Tapos, 120 times 0.35, that's 42. Okay, so total, deferred tax liability, eh, sorry, deferred tax asset is equal to 93,200. So, sagot natin. Okay, ah, uh, bago natin makalimutan, kasi for sure, alam mo na na deferred tax asset to kasi it is a deductible amount in the future. The question there is, dito sa taas, bakit considered as deferred tax liability itong item na to? Okay, kasi take note, we are talking about a prepaid item. So if we're talking about a prepaid item, we are talking about an asset. ba diba? So the carrying value of the asset here is 8,000. Okay? The tax base of that item is zero. Therefore, the carrying value is greater than the tax base. So, the amount or the difference of 8,000 is actually a source of deferred tax liability. Okay? So, yun ang concept niya. Kaya siya naging taxable temporary difference. Okay? So, yun yung, yun yung reason kung bakit siya naging taxable temporary difference. Kasi, yung, na, ang, ang nasatisfy na concept is yung carrying value of asset being uh, greater than the tax base. Okay? Pwede mo rin namang gamitin yung income statement approach kung mag-focus ka sa expense, di ba? Ang nirecognize mong expense for accounting purposes, 8,000 lang out of the total 16,000. Okay? Ang nirecognize mong expense doon for tax purposes, yung buong 16,000.
So in that case, ano ang mas mataas? Accounting income o taxable income? Malamang accounting income, di ba? Kasi mas konti yung binawas mo. So accounting income is greater than taxable income, meaning it is going to result in a deferred tax liability. Okay? So it's up to you kung anong gagamitin mong analysis kung yung balance sheet ba or yung income statement approach. Same din lang yan. Okay? That's still going to uh, result in the same uh, conclusion. Kaya siya naging taxable temporary difference resulting in deferred tax liability. Okay? Ayan. So dito naman sa 59, um, para natin na siguro na deferred tax asset siya. Kasi ang tax base natin ng talito, yung carrying value ng liability mas mataas kaysa sa tax base. Okay? Tapos kung gagamitin mo naman yung income statement approach, since mas marami kang pinawas for accounting purposes as compared sa for tax purposes, mas mababa na ngayon yung accounting income mo. So if the taxable income is greater than the accounting income, ang result naman yan ay deferred tax asset. Okay? So yun yung uh, rationale natin for that. Okay. So dito tayo sa 60. Okay, anong sabi dun? On December 31, that it is an asset of 16,000 for interest receivable that will be taxed when the cash is received in 20x2. Tax is payable at 20% on the first 2 million of taxable profit earned and 30% on any remainder. In 20x1, that it earned taxable profit of 1,800,000. And in 20x2, the entity expects to earn taxable profit of 2,200,000. What amount should be or should the entity recognize for the deferred tax liability relating to the interest receivable? Okay. So ano daw to? Yung interest receivable nirecognize na natin siya for accounting purposes. Pero that will be taxed when the cash is actually received. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin is, i-determine natin yung deferred tax liability component ng 16,000 by getting the taxable profit first for 20x2. Kasi malamang, di ba? Kung receivable mo yan ng 20x1, collection mo yan ng 20x2. So, yung 16,000, malamang masasama na siya dito. Okay? So, dalawang assumption kasi yan eh. Assumption number one is, yung 16,000 hindi pa kasama doon sa expected profit for 20x2. Yung second assumption is na uh, is uh, naisama na. So either hindi pa naisama or naisama na. What is the safest or what is the most uh, probable assumption? The most probable assumption is kasama na yung 16,000 kasi expected na yun eh. Expected earnings. So ibig sabihin, in-account na nila lahat ng mga possible cash flows. So ang gagawin natin, i-co-compute muna natin yung current tax expense tax expense for 20x2. Okay? For 20x2 yun, ha? Okay. So, paano may kukompute yun? Di ba sinabi kasi, ang tax niya is 20% for the first 2 million and then 30% for the remainder. Okay? So, parang ang mangyari dyan is yung 2 million na nauna, multiply natin ng 20%. Okay? So, that's going to be equal to 400,000. Tapos, yung excess na 200,000, multiply natin ng 30%. So, that's going to be equal to 60,000. No? 60, okay. So, yung total natin dito is 460. Okay. So, dyan sa 460, yan yung total na current tax expense. Ratio and proportion tayo kung magkano yung para kay um, 16,000. Okay? So, gagawin natin yung deferred tax liability component is going to be 460 times 16,000 divided by 2,200,000. Okay, so pag ginawa natin yun, 460 times 16,000 divided by 2,200,000. Okay, 
Yun. So, ang lalabas ay 3, 3, 4, 5.45. 3, 3, 4, 5. Yun na rin lang kasi pag pag di-round off mo yung 0.45, ganun din lang naman eh. Walagyan na lang natin yung 0.45 para kita natin. Good. So, ang sagot dito, letter D. Okay. So, again, kaya ang kinompute natin is yung current tax expense for 20x2 kasi the current tax expense for 20x2 will be our basis in determining the deferred tax liability component of the 16,000. Hindi natin siya pwedeng makuha nang na ang basis natin ay 20x1 kasi yung 20x1 earnings natin iba yung base niya. 1,800,000 lang 'yun which is not the proper um so dito the proper tax base na gagamitin natin for purposes of getting the uh, DTL. So ang gagawin mo kunin mo yung 20x2, kunin mo yung total current tax expense. Okay, since 20x lang pinag-uusapan yung makocompute mo na attributable doon sa 16,000 is actually the deferred tax liability for 20x1. Okay? Which is relating to the receivable. Kaya letter B ang sagot natin. Okay? Yun. So, yun yun. Next tayo. Yung last item natin, number 61. Sabi doon, on December 31, 20x1, the land of Guile Deceitful Company with a historical cost of 80,000 uh, has been appraised at 140 million. Sorry, so 80 million pala, sorry. Historical cost 80 million has been appraised at 140 million. The income tax rate applicable to profits is 30% and tax rate applicable to profits made on sale is 6%. How much is a deferred tax arising from the transaction? So this is similar to asset revaluation pero non-depreciable kasi yung asset. Okay? So ang gagawin mo lang dito is we are going to determine the deferred tax uh, deferred tax uh, arising from the transaction. Ang tanong dito ano to? Deferred tax asset ba or deferred tax liability? Okay? Since you are talking about revaluation, okay, resulting in a carrying value of an asset greater than the tax base, kasi ang i-maintain lang ng for tax purposes is yung historical cost, this is a deferred tax liability. Okay? So the deferred tax liability is going to be equal to, since the realization of the appraisal is going to be earned through the sales process of the asset, then hindi mo gagamitin yung 30%. Ang gagamitin mo is 6%. So that's going to be 140 million minus, sorry, nakalimutan ko, 80 million times 0.06. Okay. So that's going to be 3 million 600,000. Okay. Kasi sabi doon, oh, um, Tax rate applicable to profits made on sale of property is 6%. Okay? Kasi, um, ang tawag dito, possible din na, na ilalabas dyan sa choices natin yung sagot na wait lang, palitan ko lang to. Possible din na ang ilalabas na sagot dyan is yung automatic na 140 million times 0.06 which is 8.4. Pwede ilagay sa choices yung 8.4. Okay? Pag hindi mo nabasa yung, yan kayong kanina, diniretso ko eh, hindi ko nabasa kasi applicable to profits made on sale pala. Hindi pala actual sale. Okay? Kaya nung sinolf ko kanina, 140 times, 140 million times 6%, diniretso ko, 8-4, which is the wrong answer. Kasi ang sinabi, profits made on sale. So ibig sabihin, ibawas mo muna yung historical cost niya from the devalued amount before you get the 6%. Kasi baka masanay tayo dun sa mga capital gains tax, di ba, na ang basis is selling price lang. Okay? So, yun siya. So, anyway, that's the answer for number 61. 3,600,000. So, ingat-ingat lang dun sa basis natin nung pagkocompute. Hindi rin natin pwedeng gamitin yung 30% kasi that is based on profits ng normal transaction ng negosyo. So, 6% talaga based on the profit na mga earn natin from the revaluation. Okay. So, yun yung answer sa income taxes.